Get started cutting off the NSA support in your state. Go to offnow.org. Lock it here for more live content. Free Talk Live is next on the Liberty Radio Network. You're listening to the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, May 5th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.59 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,196 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $236. Antiwar.com reports during the extremely slow-moving coalition negotiations in Israel, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu had a luxury in dealing with the Foreign Minister Avigdor Lieberman. He didn't really need him. Shooting for a 67-seat majority but needing only 61 for a majority, Lieberman's six seats seemed disposable. Now that Lieberman is officially heading to the opposition, Likud officials are warning that 61 probably isn't enough. On paper, it is, of course, a majority in the 120 seat in set. Yet, packed with Israel's ultra-right-wing parties, it would only take one or two members of the coalition to collapse the government at any given time. Such a narrow majority gives even the small factions within the member parties a lot of power to block legislation, and officials warn that the majority won't last long and Israel could be heading for another early election. Even getting to the 61-seat majority is no guarantee. Likud announced a deal with Shas, finally, but they still need to get the Jewish home to a agree to a coalition, and leader Naftali Bennett is expected to demand an extreme amount of influence to sign on the dotted line. Netanyahu is expected to try to avoid another early election by trying to quickly moderate, hoping a little bit of progress on rapprochement with the U.S. and Palestinians could give him a shot at bringing the centrist Zionist Union into a coalition when this one collapses. Zionist Union leaders say that's unlikely, and with Bennett so peace-averse, the coalition could collapse long before any rapprochement really begins. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports the U.S. Supreme Court on Monday upheld a ban on gay conversion therapy in New Jersey for patients under the age of 18. In the case King v. Governor of New Jersey, the court declined to hear a challenge on the ban following a similar decision in 2014 that also upheld a similar ban in California. Republican New Jersey Governor Chris Christie signed a bill banning the practice in 2013. Supporters of the therapy attempted to present the issue as a restriction on free speech of doctors and counselors. Justices did not comment after issuing the order dismantling the challenge. The White House recently stated that conversion therapy, a mental treatment intended to repair members of the LGBT community, is not an effective or ethical use of psychiatry among minors and should be abandoned and prohibited at the state level. President Obama advocated legislation banning conversion therapy applied to people under the age of 18 just five months after a 17-year-old transgender girl, Leela Alcorn, committed suicide following the treatment. In Survivor Max by Davi Barker, 11-year-old Max must survive the zombie apocalypse alone in New Hampshire. Slow-moving and non-thinking, the lame brains swarm his home searching for living flesh. Max must apply his porcupine Freedom Scouts training to plan his escape, but first he must prove that he's too smart to die. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook and Amazon or read Chapter 1 free at SurvivorMax.com. Reuters reports police and local volunteers in Nepal found the bodies of about 100 trekkers and villagers buried in an avalanche set off by last month's devastating earthquake and were digging through the snow and ice for signs of dozens more missing. The government began asking foreign teams to wrap up search and rescue operations as hope of finding people alive and the rubble receded. The trekkers' bodies were recovered on Saturday and Sunday at the Langtang village, 40 miles north of Kathmandu, which is on a trekking route popular with Westerners. 
entire village, which included 55 guest houses for trekkers, was wiped out by the avalanche. Gautam Rimal, assistant chief district officer in the area where Lang Tang is located, said local volunteers and police personnel are digging through six feet of snow with shovels looking for more bodies. It's not clear how many people were in Lang Tang at the time of the avalanche, but other officials said about 120 more people could be buried under the snow. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. The Surgeon General warns teens the cinnamon challenge is not for pussies. Taylor Swift is now dating the Watertown boat, and a middle-aged funeral director buys a flashy red hearse. We pity your pathetic dependence on this for your weekly news, but here we go anyway. This is the Onion Week in Review. A study released this week by the National Institutes of Health confirmed that for the 25th straight year, wolf attacks remain the leading cause of death in the United States. The Human Health Agency's findings confirmed that being viciously killed by a ravenous wolf claimed the lives of over 800 thousand Americans last year alone, with researchers adding that one person in the United States dies every 40 seconds from a violent wolf attack. The mortality rate associated with wolf attacks vastly outstrips the death tolls of cancer, stroke, and chronic respiratory disease. People should know that anyone... Oh, Jesus, no. <laughs> this is the Onion News Network. Talk Live, 855-450-3733. It's 855-450-FREE. Well, it's uh, it's another one of these uh, shows where Ian's taking a night off, and uh, so it's 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 me in the, the driver's seat. It's Mark. And me, Johnny Carnival Ray. The, 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 the Liberty Janitor's back on the show. That's right. <laughs> and Cantwell. <laughs> and Cantwell. God knows. I don't even have a... Liberty name for you. 855-450-3733. Folks can call in and talk about whatever is on their minds here on Free Talk Live. That's how we do it. And so, um, can't well, I, I I don't know. We've had so many, there's so many good pieces of show prep out there. I kind of feel like we've got to start with this thing in Texas, though. Don't you? You know, the, uh, the shooting yesterday? Yeah, I wouldn't mind talking about that. I've seen sort of the headlines and... Uh... It doesn't sound like the best of situations. No, no. Mm-hmm. There's some people that uh, seems suboptimal, really. <laughs> it's it's it, it's so it would seem. Well, it's news to me. I don't know that I've heard of it. Well, that's. Uh, hey, well, I me... follow. I watch. I follow. All right. I'm on. I'm on Reddit looking at the the news subreddit, and um, and uh, I don't know that I've seen this. Well, you're out polishing floors. You're you're listening to the news. Good. I like Tom Woods. <laughs> he probably hasn't gotten to this one yet. Well, I'm going to tell you about it. I've got uh, an article from The Guardian that claims apparently that these two Muslim fellas that uh, attacked a- an event in Garland, Texas, where they were having a uh, Draw Muhammad contest where you could win, I think it was $10,000 for the best drawing of uh, the, the Prophet Muhammad. That's a that's a pretty nice prize. It's pretty hefty. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, they, were, they had a little prize going, and... I guess these two fellows were pretty deeply offended, so they came out there to uh, exact a little vengeance upon this, uh, what they considered this sacrilegious act, and uh, they were going to shoot the place up, and instead they got shot up. So there you go. Well, you know, I'm, uh, I'm, I think it's good that uh, those guys are not going to be bothering anybody anymore. I'm certainly not Even a better, fan. They've got of... a bunch of uh, virgins right now, right? They are in heaven. Yeah, lucky them. I'm not a big fan of Pam Geller or the folks who are putting this thing on. By the way, I don't think that there's some. <laughs> really good uh folks this was not an event put on by people who were just like hey let's uh, have a res- restoration of rationality and uh and condemn this uh, religious idiocy but they uh they just wanted to offend muslims and it looks like they succeeded on the face of it the 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 draw muhammad contest seems ill-considered and malicious to me if you're gonna do it i think you should do it as a draw muhammad slash bible burning event that way you don't have this sort of uh you know uh, this this bronze yep. age, like I've got a I've got a pre, I've got a preferred bronze age religion thing going on, um, you know I mean that's what it looks like to me. It looks like a a, a bunch of adherents to old, very old religions tossing rocks at each other, mm-hmm. just you know uninteresting. Let's go to Frode calling in from 
Oh, hell, I don't know where Frode's calling in from. Frode, where, where are you calling in from? Norway. There you go. Norway. What's on your mind? Well, I wanted to talk a little about the war on drugs, not to shift the topic completely. No but... problem. <laughs> uh I wanted to uh, talk to you about how uh, the Netherlands are making a shift in their uh, policy when it comes to uh, foreigners outside of the Netherlands that are not be going to be able to more buy legally drugs in the Netherlands. And how strange I think that is, because uh, isn't that one of the reasons why people go to the Netherlands because they have so open laws about uh, uh, drugs. This is like Amsterdam, right? Yes. Yeah, the circles I run in, about 95% of the people who tell me stories about their trips to the to the Netherlands are involve the, you know going to these uh these pot stores. That's that's the the reason for them going. They've got legalized so prostitution there too, right? Yes, they do. And, and uh, Renoirs? Mm, I mean, that's yeah. about it. But now it seems like they are shutting down the opportunity for uh, Americans or Norwegians or Germans to get to use drugs in the coffee shops. Uh, you have to be a native uh, Nederland man or woman to buy Dane? drugs now. <laughs> no, that's not a Dane. What, if, what do they well, call that's, them? That would be Dane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Denmark. Denmark. Yeah, I've yeah. got it wrong. Um, uh, yeah, I have no idea. I mean, it seems like a terrible idea. What What is their it's, reason? It's not going it? to do good things for their tourism, and it's going to create a huge black market. They're going to have. It's going to be a crime problem. It's ridiculous. Yes, and that's is what I was thinking of. Now that people uh, know and uh, trust that the Netherlands is going to be a country where it's possible to get uh, drugs, uh, people are still going to visit because nobody knows that the Netherlands has made stricter laws when it comes to their drug policy. Right. The drugs are still available, right? So, I mean, the idea yes. is going to be that somebody's going to go to the Netherlands and be like, okay, now now let's go on Craigslist or whatever the Netherlands equivalent of the online classified ads is and say, hey, uh, somebody want to walk into the coffee shop for me? Yeah, it sounds yeah. like uh, people are going to be meeting folks in the park. Um, you know, I mean, there's a, a lot of public spaces in um, Amsterdam, and I imagine you're going to have people meeting folks in the park. You know, somebody somebody's got a, a sign out saying, "Hey, I'll yeah. <laughs> talk to me if you're a tourist." This is how I used to get yeah. beer when I was a kid, right? I would call it shoulder tapping. You stand outside the store and you'd be like, "Hey, buddy, can you get me and my friend some beer?" You know, and they go in and they get you the beer, and then you get drunk in the woods. But you did this uh, as in the United States as a young person. And where you have very few rights, is my understanding. They, uh, you know, police have very few rights in Amsterdam as far as like searching people yes. and that kind of thing. But the thing is, is now they are creating more problems. They are creating more crimes with uh, a policy that are going to hurt the uh, tourist in industry. That's so weird for foremost. government to pass a policy that would create crimes and <laughs> do damage. It's so strange. Bro, yes. do you have any idea why they're claiming that this is a good idea? I mean, I, I remember they, they've been yeah, talking because... about it. Yeah, because they, they, they don't want to be known as the country where everyone can come and do drugs because it's, it's a bad way to look on the Netherlands. It's a, it's a, it beats looking like Thailand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, even worse, I mean, you know, there's plenty of countries where nobody thinks about going there at all, right? right? Like they're just yes. like, yeah. Know, what's what's the what's the tourist like destination of uh, of uh, North Korea? <laughs> like, right, like like Finland, right? Road. I mean, you know, what's yeah. the? I would imagine that they that that Finland has about as much to offer as uh, the Netherlands, um, without uh, pot and pro and hookers. Uh, if you yeah. can remove yeah. those two out of the picture, then what do you got? Not much. Frozen tundra. Mm -hmm. in, in Norway, we have like fjords. That's it. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, and, and so and mountains. I'm not going <laughs> to undermine the incredible drawing power of a good fjord, but I mean, <laughs> in Amsterdam, sure. they've got some. Uh, it's it, I don't know. I think a fjord is like a, a steep drop off into a river. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Okay. That's cool. Um, yeah. They're dramatic. Yeah. Cretan. Majestic. Also. <laughs> it's, it, it's majestic. You.
<laughs> and 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 this is also a thing that uh, when I meet Americans, they think polar bears live in the street of Norway. Yeah, for right. Strange reason. Don't they have them like way up um, in the northern part though? No. no. There you go. They've all been killed by global warming, Mark. <laughs> right, they've probably been <laughs> killed by hungry, hungry Finlanders. <laughs> Mark and Chris, a fjord is a long, narrow, deep inlet of the sea between high cliffs, as in Norway Thanks. and Iceland. Sounds right. Thanks. And yes, the the demonym for a person from the Netherlands well, is a Netherlander. Netherlander. So what? So you're if you if you, look, they're gonna ban drugs for tourists, and you're gonna have all these fjords. You're gonna have people jumping off of them. It's gonna be traumatic. It's not gonna look good at all. No, no fjords in the Netherlands. That's why it's called the Netherlands because it's beneath. Oh, okay. They, they, they like build these little it's walls. Really one of the flattest countries in the entire world, actually. It's basically claimed from the sea. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think it's a ridiculous idea. Uh, it's it's cutting off one's nose in order to spite one's face, and it's always a bad move. Uh, there's people that make a lot of money uh, catering to tourists that come to the Netherlands for a variety of probably less than savory reasons, and maybe every once in a while they get to see a really great portrait or check out some really cool canals. Would like be like Las Vegas banned uh, gambling? There you go. That's yeah, it, it's about it's about like that Vegas game uh, banning gambling. Thanks so much for the call, uh, Fro. Eight fifty five four fifty free or LRN FM on Skype. It's eight fifty five four fifty free. Free talk live. Are you completely free of stress and fatigue? Well, of course not. You aren't alone, though. Now think about how nice it would be to begin relieving some of that stress and fatigue. Let me introduce you to a product that has and is working for me. It's called Youthful Greens. Youthful Greens. It's packed full of nature's nourishing, cleansing, and alkalizing greens, providing a powerful dose of whole food nutrition in each serving. Youthful Greens helps increase overall energy levels and reduce all that fatigue and stress on your body. And right now, when you visit freegreens.net or call 800-333-6923 and order your one-month supply of Youthful Greens for only $29.95, you get another month's supply for free. That's two months of Youthful Greens for the already low price of just $29.95, plus free shipping. That's saving you $45. Visit freegreens.net today or simply call 800-333-6923. And hey... You're welcome. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years, hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power, a gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. 
It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine freedom scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read chapter one at SurvivorMax.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450 free. It's 855-450-3733. Or you can call us on Skype. Oftentimes it'll sound better if you've got a good mic. It certainly does. Um, our username is lrn.fm. If you haven't already, sent us a user request. Basically what you've got to do is send us one. We'll uh, click on it during the show. I'm actually trying to do that right now. And, you know, we'll be able to take your call and it'll sound generally better. So username is lrn. Dot FM, that's is in Liberty Radio Network on Skype, and 855-450-FREE, uh, toll-free on the telephone. Cantwell, we just got our shipment of Sherry's Berries a couple days ago. I have uh, saved some for you, and you would consume them right before the show. The Sherry's Berries is advertising with us for Mother's Day. Do you think it's a good gift for uh, mothers? I, I do think it's a good gift for mothers and, um, you know, wives who happen to be mothers and all of that type of thing. People they're, with mouths? Yes. People with mouths usually tend to enjoy Sherry's Berries, I think. they I, I had to, I just had the one because I'm trying not to do the chocolate thing, and but I had to have one of them, so I took the <laughs> one with the with the milk chocolate with the nuts on it. How was it? It was excellent, excellent, excellent. The uh, They have milk chocolate, dark chocolate, and white chocolate. Now, I p- prefer the white chocolate generally. Johnny Ray, have you Racist. had one? Yes, I've had uh, one of each, I think. Uh, this recently? Recently, yeah, yes. Okay. How, how'd you like them? Delicious. You know, s- strawberries are one of the glories of God. Did you have one? Did you? And these are not like sour, like half of the ones you get at the grocery store, sour. Uh-huh. They, they test, uh, somehow, I don't know if they test, they, they reject half of the strawberries that they get over at Sherry's Berries and send them like homeless shelters or something like that. So, you know, wherever, wherever the Sherry's Berries is, does reasonably, the homeless shelter does reasonably well when it comes to berries. But um, it's it's interesting. They have the best tasting berries, and then they cover them in premium chocolate. Yeah, yeah they're enormous strawberries and very sweet. Yeah, it's a great deal. So please uh, consider sending to mom this year Sherry's berries. I think she'll love them. Um, or not, maybe not necessarily your mom, as Cantwell said. Uh, could be the mother of your children or some woman that you do know that has children. Some girl any, that any... you want to turn into a mother. <laughs> <laughs> Is that appropriate? <laughs> Berries dot com, B E R R I E S dot com, Berries dot com. You click on the microphone; it's in the upper right hand corner. You type in F T L. We have a um, we have a, more than a forty percent savings if you use our coupon code. If you don't use our coupon code and uh, you go over there and order, the statists win. It's coupon code F T L at Berries dot com. Let's go to Cameron calling in from uh, Massachusetts. Cameron, you're on Free Talk Live. Hi, I'd just like um, to comment on a post that Free Talk Live posted on Facebook earlier. Okay. I don't know if I saw it, but all right, tell me about it. It was a cool picture that, like, that says, what does it say about the quality of police in America when you have to compare them to crackheads to make them look appealing? Yeah, it was a picture of this shirt that (laughs) goes around that they're like, oh, you don't like cops? Next time you're in trouble, call a crackhead. (laughs) And I thought that was, I shared that one on my page today, too. That was great. I saw a couple of people actually wearing it around around the town that I live in. 
Yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of these T-shirts to, to support, um, you know, Cops' Lives Matter or whatever it is. Um, and it's it's funny that uh, the, the suggestion is is that if you don't have police, the only people you'll be able to call are crackheads or something. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm so, not even sure what they're saying. Does that, that, does that mean that everybody who's not a cop in America is a crackhead? Yeah, it's just cops and crackheads. That's the United States for you right now. I mean, it's, sometimes it really does seem that way, though. But uh, then again, you know, cop and crackhead are not necessarily mutually exclusive things, right? There's probably more than a few crackhead cops out there. So you just might be calling a crackhead when you dial 911. Always keep that in mind. I'll keep that in mind. Yeah. So what did, you, what did, what did it make you think when you saw it? When I just saw the captions of it that said um, comparing them to crackheads makes them look appealing, I've just, like, that just made my entire opinion about that T-shirt yeah, fully I, expressed. I, I'm thinking that one's going to go viral. Free Talk Live's gotten pretty lucky with uh, some memes, as many as 18 million post views in a week, and uh, I, I think that might be the one that uh, bumps us up there. Our Facebook page isn't working quite right, but uh, that's it's not going to have anything to I do with I had some views. errors with my page yesterday as well, but I, I shared that meme to uh, Christopher Cantwell, the website, my brand page, and uh, I got over 200 likes on my share of it. So thank you for that, Mark. Sure. There you go. Cameron, appreciate the call. Thanks so much. 855-450 free. Let's go to Daniel calling in from San Francisco. Daniel, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Um, I saw something earlier on the internet, and people were talking about uh, uh, justifications for shooting looters and that sort of thing. I wanted to throw a few ideas around about that. Okay, this was on our Facebook page, or what was this? Well, you, you just saw. No, no, no. Okay. I saw it on some other libertarian blog. I'm not sure what what it was. Okay, but it just got some ideas going in my head. All right, shooting um, losers, so looters. Oh, looters. Okay. Yeah, lo yeah, losers, not shooting losers. As, 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 as tempting uh, as the idea is, I do not advocate for yeah, shooting hey, losers. Hey, we've oh, all watch been there, it now, right? Mark. Watch it. <laughs> Just watch yourself. <laughs> the libertarian janitor speaks. So, um, the guy gave sort of the standard story about defending property and defending life and everything. And obviously, I don't take issue with that. It's, uh, you know, if someone's beating the crap out of you and you got a gun on you, well, by all means, use it. Um, but what I had issue with is the idea that. We're not gonna we're not gonna shoot the people who are looting every day, day in and day out. We're gonna shoot the desperately poor people who are stealing diapers and toilet paper. Like it just seems to me to be like out of all proportion. I mean, the police are out there looting people every day. The congressmen and the politicians are out there looting people every day. No one shoots them because they can shoot back. That's that's but most unfortunate, like by the way. You're, <laughs> you're gonna feel like you're a tough guy because you're shooting the dude stealing diapers. Well, it's not a matter of feeling like a tough guy because you're shooting a guy who's stealing diapers. The point is, it's like, okay, this is a threat that I cannot manage, right? So when the when the tax man comes around and says, hey, I'm going to take a third of everything you have for as long as you live, pal, right? I might be like, hey, I don't know. Maybe I should kill that guy. But then I have like this reasonable expectation that a bunch of armed goons are going to show up and, and end my life and take my children into CPS and all sorts of matter of illness, right? But You're afraid of the repercussions. Yeah, I'm afraid of the repercussions. And if some other yeah. idiot comes around and starts stealing from me and I have the capacity to do something about it, uh, you know, it seems like that's a uh, it's a value judgment that seems fairly clear. Well, usually you only have to level the threat of uh, shooting. I mean, in the Rodney King uh, situation when, uh, when, when L.A. was on uh, fire, essentially the people who were out front with AKs, they didn't have their mm -hmm. stores looted. It was everybody else yeah. who did. Right. So there's there's that. certainly that. I mean, it, it, yes, but, you know, it, to threaten, I don't draw a very big line between threats of force and use of force, right? Because if I'm going to say, hey, I'll shoot you if you do this, this means that if you do it, I'm going to shoot, shoot you. you. Gotcha. So if I'm going to, if I'm going to, you know, hold out a gun and say, uh, you know, I'll kill anybody who crosses this here line. Well, then, uh, you know, it's the same thing as shooting people who cross that there line, right? Yeah. Dude, my, my, my issue is not with the the justification. My issue is with the target selection. What I what I see happening is the people you're shooting at, they've been putting up with far worse looting than you're putting up. I mean, the cops are looting them day in and day out, every day, every day. And I I agree with you like, that uh, that they should. It's like you're you're, you're, mis, you're misidentifying like the real culprit. Yeah. And what I think is happening on a sort of a broader scale in our society, and this is this is scary. When I really like wrap my head around this, this frightens me. Daniel, uh, thanks for the call. Appreciate it.
855 We all know that Berkey Water Purification Systems are the most trusted name in water filtration. As an authorized Berkey dealer for over six years in serving thousands of satisfied customers, the Berkey Guy offers amazing specials for Berkey Water Filtration Systems. The Berkey Light Systems include a set of self-sterilizing and recleanable black purification elements that purify water by removing chlorine, pathogenic bacteria, cysts and parasites to non-detectable levels and remove harmful chemicals such as herbicides and pesticides. Order the Berkey Light System today, complete with two black Berkey elements for only $231, and the Berkey Guy will ship your order free of charge. With the purchase of a Berkey Light, the Berkey Guy is also offering a set of fluoride and arsenic filters for only $39.99. That's over 30% off the retail price. Call the Berkey Guy at 1-877-886-3653. That's 1-877-886-3653. Or order online at GoBerkey.com. That's GoBerkey.com today. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com. 101reasonsfilm.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. If you're looking for work, or even if you're not, here's an innocent mistake you really want to avoid. Never return calls before listening to your voicemail. Your wireless phone sends calls you didn't answer into voicemail, and it shows you phone numbers for calls you missed. Important, don't call back callers you missed until you have first listened to your messages. Otherwise, you frustrate people who bothered to leave messages by asking them to repeat a message they just left as your voicemail greeting instructed them to. If you're a job applicant, this alone could be a deal killer. And even if you're not, there are few things you can convey to someone that are as fundamentally maddening as, I didn't hear you. With money and attention so scarce now. Effective communication skills have never been more important. For more tips for job seekers and everyone else, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450 free. That's 855-450-3733. You can call in and talk about whatever's on your mind here on this live edition of Free Talk Live with Mark. Johnny Ray. And Cantwell. 855-450 free. If you are like, well, most Americans who are listening to this program, you've got a smartphone. And if your smartphone is like mine, 
it's pretty much dead by noon uh, unless you've, you're able to, to keep it plugged in and use it, which kind of eliminates the value of a mobile phone. Um, it's they run out of power real quick. You basically have to have some kind of battery backup. And I found a great one. It's called the Pocket Power Plus. And the value to it can't. Well, we actually uh, let you use it. Um, are you liking it? Yeah, I did. I I have I I haven't had occasion to jump the car with it. That's what I really want to see it do. But I have charged the phone with it. It charges the phone up and still has plenty of power left over. It's very useful for you that. You can also plug in laptops and that kind of thing, which you basically can't do with the other yeah um, ones out there. I suppose you could look like rig up some kind of cord with a um, take two cords like a uh, USB cord and then your po- power cord for your laptop and attempt to rig. Something that up. would be a disaster. That Is would that be that would be a really bad idea. <laughs> okay. The t- again. <laughs> it's the Mark, wrong it's the wrong voltage, wrong amperage, wrong wattage. You don't want to do that. Mark is not an engineer. Yeah, you shouldn't don't take, take that advice from Mark. <laughs> You're like, well, if you want to just start playing around with electricity <laughs> in absolute ignorance, then by all means get out the wire cutters and the electrical tape, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> electricity is not a hobby. <laughs> <laughs> Nonetheless, you can use the Pocket Power Plus Connect to charge- this unknown power source to your $2,000 laptop and just see how it pans out for you. <laughs> no big deal. Or you can get the Pocket Power Plus. The eye whoops. <laughs> <laughs> you can go to PocketPowerPlus9.com and get this, frankly, very versatile tool. Um, you can slide it in your pocket. You can put it in a glove box. You can uh, charge your laptop. Potentially, you can jump your car. It comes with jumper cables. I've seen it jump a car on a video. Um, You know, I would want to have just charged it up and taken it off the plug and then apply it right then. But, you know, it it comes with the jumper cables. So check it out. PocketPowerPlus9.com. If you go to the PocketPowerPlus9.com, you'll get it for 50 percent off you just go to pocket power plus i imagine i don't know you know i imagine you're going to pay a bit more you also use coupon code ftl you save even more pocket power plus nine dot com so we were talking about this situation in garland texas where a couple of fellas um went there and decided that they were going to stop a uh, mohammed drawing contest and this is I don't know if this is religiously. I don't know that much about Islam um, from a religious standpoint. I mean, I don't know the 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 specifics like I do about Christianity, but I, it's either culturally or religiously a very bad thing to do to depict. Basically, you're not supposed to depict animals or humans, but specifically, if there's one human you are not supposed to, uh, you know, show is the Prophet Muhammad. Uh, this is very important to these folks now. You know, I don't think Muhammad's any more of a prophet than you or I, frankly. But nonetheless, this frankly, is frankly, I to think someone. our information is better. We qualify as prophets better than Muhammad. Yeah, I think, you, and that's going to get me definitely shot by ISIS. I think you have to, um, it, it, like, to be a prophet. It's not just the amount of information that you have; it's the amount of information as relevant to the culture that you're in at a given time, right? All right. Like, so Bob Murphy is an Austrian economist, and I'm going to call him the prophet. Fine. I'll take it. Um, so agreed, right? But I, like things didn't go well for these guys. They they came there with some guns to kill themselves, some rednecks, and uh, instead got themselves killed. And there you go. Um, I'm supposed to feel bad about it, I guess, or good about What's it. Or it, something. it was, were they know. shot by cops or was it by carry holders? Uh, cops. Okay. And so, yeah, that was the end of that. Apparently, uh, the claim is, is that, and this has been going around on talk radio, and this is what I sort of want to clear up about it. Uh, ISIS, not so much. Uh, this wasn't really necessarily an ISIS thing. The yeah, Islamic- I, I, my, I was told. I'm sorry. I know you're about to tell the story, but I'm actually like curious. I've seen the headline that like ISIS claims credit for Texas shooting, and I'm like, I don't know if you want to claim credit for that. It doesn't seem to pan out so well, buddy. Well, ISIS is already a bunch of dead men, frankly. Um, Anybody who's uh, over there participating in that is at some point or another going to get squashed by some coalition government if they continue to do the things that they've been doing. It appears as though they all want to go to heaven early. But nonetheless, um, that's just a prediction. I am not advocating for it. Do not necessarily want that. Um, I don't want a big government coalition thing going in there and starting war. However, I don't want what the ISIS people have either. Yeah, I'm all for people killing ISIS. I just don't want to be taxed to pay for it. Yeah, I think that's pretty much how I feel, too. The Islamic State group proclaimed early on Tuesday, this is from The Guardian, 
over at uh, Guardian, theguardian.com. Uh, Joanne Walters said uh, the Islamic State group proclaimed early on Tuesday that it had carried out its first terrorist attack on American soil and warned of bigger and more bitter strikes to come as it took responsibility for the failed assault on an art contest featuring cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad held in Texas at um, at the weekend. So ISIS claimed responsibility for a completely failed and botched attack. Yeah, it doesn't seem like I, I, w- I would not be anxious to co-sign that particular thing of just like, oh, well, our buddies went and got shot by the police. <laughs> so uh, you 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 Americans, you better watch out because uh, we're really getting our stuff together. On another note about ISIS's organization, I, I saw a screenshot of a tweet, and I don't know how real it is, but somebody had said, uh, uh, somebody on Twitter had replied to somebody else's tweet and said, why don't you put down the chicken wings and come to jihad, bro? <laughs> <laughs> I just got a kick out of it. Um, so I'm wondering, would it have made more sense for these guys, instead of getting all bent out of shape and going over there and getting themselves killed uh, and going to heaven, I guess, and there's the virgins and the offing and all that, uh, wouldn't it have just made more sense for them to hold themselves a Bible burning? Uh, I mean, this is kind of what I'm wondering. is Because I think that this is... This uh, Muhammad drawing thing is kind of a distasteful thing to do. It's clearly intended to exacerbate the situation well yeah the thing was put on by pam geller i don't know if you know who that is i've heard the name but she, she wrote the post-american presidency she was like uh, uh she was like a birther and you know all this barack obama's a muslim stuff she's a yeah. she's a fanatic she's a real she's a real lunatic and she went by um she was going by the name atlas shrugs um you know, and she was hardly ayn randian at all she was a, a war fanatic she was a complete uh you know, right-wing neocon war hawk lunatic. Yeah. Well, I mean, not that the objectivists are particularly anti-war, not compared to uh, libertarians at least. But, um, you know, it seems like these this behavior is going to only elicit more behavior on the other side. Like, the it this behavior is intended to create a, I, I don't have a right term for it, not race war, but a religious war, a new crusade. What what behavior? Like the the Muhammad drawing contest. Gotcha. Because it sounds like the the smart Muslim group that's really put off by this. The smart ones are going to say, this behavior is not the sort of behavior that adults participate in, and you know no one should take these people seriously. It's, this is reprehensible behavior, and uh, we just want to live our lives. Please stop this. My thing is, I don't have a problem. I, like, I don't even think that behavior is all that reprehensible. You're like, okay, well, you know, this religion is ridiculous, and we're going to mock it today. Like, I'm actually They're not like, doing pretty that, okay though. with that. But, well, because of who it is, right? Like, Pam Geller put this thing on. This is war propaganda, like you're saying. They're trying to, you know, get the crusade on. Right, and it's not even necessarily war propaganda. It's it's not even saying this religion's ridiculous. It's saying that religion's ridiculous. Ours is really awesome. Yeah, and so the the smart group of uh, uh, iconoclast Muslims are going to say, well, let's just have ourselves a Bible burning, and we'll find with ourselves some of these uh, crucifixes they sell in every gas station and uh, um, you know mini mart in, in the United States, and we'll pee on them, and they'll do a variety of things in order to get people angry, and then it'll go back and forth and back and forth until it is a full on shoot and war. Is this what we want? Well, the answer is from these people, yes. It is. That's what they want. Sounds like it. I don't. I don't want that. I think that uh, people should lay down their arms, and frankly, their the religions too, if they if it causes them to want to fight. Eight fifty five four fifty free. Jesus was the Prince of Peace. This is Shaquille O'Neal and the Shaquettes, reminding you that anytime, anytime is a good time. Good time for the cooling, drying, fresh scent of Gold Bond powder spray, like after the gym. Or or golf. Or working with farm animals. Or a hard day's work. Like sports casting? You said it, ladies. Stay cool with Gold Bond Powder Spray. Stay cool with Gold Bond. <laughs> 
Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. If the IRS has garnished your paycheck or seized money from your bank account, you need to get professional tax help now. Fast action is required to put a halt to these aggressive IRS collection tactics. You can count on the knowledgeable team of tax professionals at Wall & Associates. With over 30 years of experience, Wall & Associates has settled the tax problems of thousands of taxpayers for a small fraction of what they owed. For a free face-to-face -face consultation, call 1-800-425-4610 to put a wall between you and the IRS, 1-800-425-4610, or look for us on the web at wallandassociates.net. We solve tax problems. If you hire Wall & Associates today, you'll never have to talk to the IRS again. To stop the levies and seizures today, take action now. Call Wall & Associates at 1-800-425-4610. Wall & Associates, 1-800-425-4610. Based on actual cases, results may vary, not a solicitation for legal services. There are two types of advertising. Poll advertising, like Google AdWords, where a consumer goes looking for widgets near them and you try to pull them in with your ad away from the other widget purveyors. Then there's push advertising, where you push your message out about your great widgets and attempt to convince people who weren't thinking about widgets at all that what they need in their life right now is your widget. Radio is push advertising. In the course of a week, there are probably over a quarter million good folks listening to Free Talk Live, and they could hear your message. We are having a sale right now, and it ends May 15th. 200 30-second ads for $1,997. That's like 10 bucks an ad. Find another show with that kind of rate with 150-plus stations. Email me. Mark Edge at marketfreetalklive.com and I'll set you up. You don't need to have an ad. We'll produce it for you. Buy 200 30 second ads by May 15th and get them for less than $10 a piece. It's a big savings and you don't want to miss it. Email me, Mark at freetalklive.com now. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road Underground Market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross may be spending the rest of his life in prison. His family is planning to appeal his conviction, but they need your support. Please visit freeross.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Ross needs your help now more than ever. Visit freeross.org. That's freeross.org. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3. It's 855-450-3733. You can call in and talk about anything you want here on this live edition of Free Talk Live. We're talking about the shooting in Texas that went on it yesterday. And, you know, just some thoughts on it. I um, don't feel bad in the least that these guys are dead. But at the same time, I think that the whole drawing Muhammad thing was, you know, it was in bad taste. So what? So what what? So what if it was in bad taste? Well, um, how are these same people going to handle it if somebody has a Bible burning out in front of this event? I, I think that if somebody had a Bible burning out in front of the event that they would say a bunch of nasty things about them. You don't think there'd be a fist fight? Perhaps. Okay. You know, I mean, I, I don't know everybody who is there. I mean, I wouldn't be, it doesn't surprise me that religious fanatics assault people, right? Like, that's not, <laughs> it does, it's not it the most shocking thing that I've heard today. I uh, do think it's, uh, 
you know, like, uh, it seems odd to me that people who are adherents uh, to Christianity, Christ being the Prince of Peace, uh, are so often so ready to go to war. And it shows how much this religion has changed over the course of 2,000 years. For the first 1,000 years, it was an incredibly large debate inside of the Christian religion as to whether or not a Christian could be in the military, could, uh, could support a war at all in any way, shape, or form. Um, it seems to me that Christ would have probably been pretty good about people of other religions, but... Um, you know, I mean, there are uh, the, the essentially Islam was intended to clarify um, was Muhammad attempting to clarify some of the uh, the, the the problems that he saw inside uh, Christianity and um, Judaism, that kind of thing. Uh, many of his uh, concerns are around the, the Trinity. He's like really anti Trinity. He's all about a Unitarian. Um, and, you know, those arguments go on in, in Christianity, too. But if, do you think that this was a good uh, you know, this was a good idea? Are you happy with the results? Because I can see a lot of people saying, yeah, Texas two, ISIS zero, baby, you know, that kind of thing. And it's just man. Well, I mean, I think it worked out uh, wonderfully for them. I mean, they're war propagandists, these people. So they put on a thing that was designed to incite Muslims. And then sure enough, a couple of them came to try to kill them. And then they killed the Muslims. And that's sort of, I think, the, the, the goal there, right? So I don't like these people or what they were trying to do. But I also have absolutely no problem with going out and inciting religious people and saying, no, we're going to do this thing that your religion forbids. And you can, you know, come after me if I'm wearing whatever mixed fabrics or whatever whatever lunatic thing uh, they, they want to have a problem with next, right? If I'm going to go eat some shellfish or something like that. As, a, as an atheist, why? Why do you do that? I'm not an atheist. I don't claim that. But why, why, do you, why are you so excited about the idea of poking people's religions to the point that they're ready to, to fight? For the, for the same reason that I like to go and harass the meter mate, right? I'm like, you're ridiculous. I hate what you're doing, and I want to make you uncomfortable. Do you I think want to it discourage works? your behavior. Do you think that works? Does it? You think it discourages the behavior? Because many times, remember, in built into the at least the Christian psyche is the uh, is the idea that they are persecuted already, right? Like they'll reference persecution. The majority in the United States believes that they're trying to take take away Christmas, the most popular holiday in the United States. Like this is how kind of twisted or myopic the worldview is of uh, many of these religious folks is that the people who are the you know parts of the largest religion in the United States believe that that somebody out there is trying to take away the biggest and most profitable holiday of the United States look people be they religious statist or just fundamentally detached from reality uh, generally speaking, are complete morons. They're completely out of their freaking heads. You just mean and, people generally. Yes. And so I take a certain amount of blood. They cause me a lot of discomfort in this world, right? I've got to listen to people screaming about Black Lives Matter and, and burn it down CVS in Baltimore. I've got to listen to uh, women talk about a war on women. I've got to talk to listen to Christians talk about a war on Christmas. I've got to watch these guys try to shoot up a, 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 a drawing contest. They're all fanatics. They're all lunatics. And it makes me really uncomfortable. I have to stop suffer through this every single day. I go and I read the headlines and I'm like, the world is going down the toilet and leaving skid marks. So if I have to visit a little bit of misery on these SOBs, then I will do it. Is, aren't you just better off just ignoring them? I wish I could. I'm a media personality. <laughs> I have to read the news, so I have to look at this stuff. Well, you don't have to be a media person. Uh, you, you, as a matter of fact, you were making really good money doing your job previously. You gave it up for the very act of going ahead and, and interacting with these people, and now it gives you high blood pressure. It, it certainly does. <laughs> uh, you know, And it's one of these things, though. But now, I mean, look, you think uh, even if I deleted my website and YouTube channel tomorrow, people start Googling my name. They're going to find the things that I've said, okay? I am out of the muggle job market. There's no way that I can just go back to <laughs> IT. It's not going to happen, especially not here in New Hampshire. Is that true? Like you couldn't go into IT just because you've said too much? 
I might be able to go in and find uh, independent contracting gigs in New York, right? Okay. I could blend in in a, in a large city where nobody knows who the heck I am, and maybe I could uh, sca- scrape out a living that way. But if I go throw a resume in front of an HR director, these people, they Google your name now, right? <laughs> they Google your name. It's I've, I've been locked up twice. I'm more afraid of the Google search than I am of a criminal background check. <laughs> Mark, the group that put on this contest is known as Stop Islamization of America, also known as the American Freedom Defense Initiative. Do you, do you think that America is being Islamicized? Please give us a call at 855-450-FREE. Because I just don't see this. The idea that somebody somewhere in America might have used Sharia law to settle their dispute with, say, one Muslim with another Muslim is not the Islamization of America. If I have Johnny Ray... Dis- settle a dispute with uh, Christopher Cantwell and Mark Edge. We haven't done anything to your country or your religion. It's just that you're a hate monger, right? right? Like that's what your problem is. You've listened to a bunch of people whose hearts are full of hate. You nothing know nothing of religion. Because God is about love, and you are listening to preachers who are about hate. I, I don't if know you where believe... you got the idea that God was about love. but well, the, that's the... what I'm told. That's what I was told in Christianity, and I'm speaking to Christians who believe that they um, their religion is about love, and I'm contending with them that if you think that it's some kind of problem that a couple of Muslim dudes use Sharia law to solve a problem— you're not qualified to make the decisions you're making. No, they're they're wholly unqualified to be making decisions, period. They're completely detached from reality. To to have these people being a, a driving force between American foreign policy is it's a miracle that we haven't had an atomic war. I don't think they are the driving force in American foreign policy, really. Most of the, uh, uh, you know, there's probably the Republicans, and even some of the Democrats want to see Israel protected by the United States, and some of it is because of the Christianity thing. But mostly those folks are used used as cannon fodder like they just want you know you're excited about the the muslims fine son sign up here we're gonna use you in a war we've got really hard bullets we need you to catch and that's what that's what politicians you know politicians find your religion useful or right. they find it to be you know not well, they, useful. yeah they, they they pander to your uh your religious uh, fantasies they say hey elect me and i'll carry out the will of your deity yeah, right. <laughs> and then people are like oh that sounds like a great idea i'll run into the voting booth and vote for you right <laughs> exactly my god wants me to vote for the guy who's going to go mess with the other people over there uh and i'm not i'm contending your god really wouldn't want that that's just not there's no evidence that uh, that would would be what the the contention would be i don't know i mean look gods have been known to do some pretty nasty things like drown the entire planet right so i mean maybe maybe gods are for wars it seems to reason right Stop Islamization of America first entered the public eye with its early opposition to the construction of Park 51, originally named Cordoba House, a 13-story Muslim community center proposed for a location two blocks from the World Trade Center Ah, site in Lower Manhattan. The the talk show hosts had a a heyday with this one. Dear God, they want to put a uh, a Muslim recreation center just two blocks away from the the site of the World Trade Center bombing. (laughs) They called it hallowed ground. They were like, this is hallowed ground. You can't put a a mosque there. And it was like, like a strip club across the street, and all this <laughs> it's, stuff. <laughs> it's uh, you know, like makes no sense to me, whatever, dude. It's I was just, I was just rank xenophobia. I was, I was in the in the middle of that. So like, this is a. Uh, you know, they were trying to do that at like the height of the Tea Party, no less, right? So, and and this is, you know, I'm from New York, and uh, you know, people who I was associated with were freaking out about this, just going absolutely insane about it. And uh, I I knew guys who were down there protesting and talking about this Islamization of America, and they're talking to me about how Sharia law is already in our courts. And I'm like, well, just let me explain to you that they're carrying out the terms of a contract, which is sort of the whole point of the court. The, the civic courts, uh, you know, people are deciding the civil courts. They're deciding these things. This is a contract. Yeah. Anyway, eight five five four five zero three seven three three. I'm willing to re- listen. Listen to what you've got to say on it. Eight fifty five four fifty free. Free talk live. In 
a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial, the fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the fully informed jury association at FIJA.org. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. LRN.FM needs your help getting our satellite signal back on in Africa. Our satellite provider had us on at no charge from 2012 through February of this year when they pulled the channel off the air. Now we're trying to raise $22,000 to continue reaching people with the message of liberty in places where it's needed most. Please visit our Indiegogo fundraiser at africa.lrn.fm. Give what you can and share the link with your friends. africa.lrn.fm. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, May 5th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.59 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,196 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $236. Antiwar.com reports during the extremely slow-moving coalition negotiations in Israel, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu had a luxury in dealing with the Foreign Minister Avigdor Lieberman. He didn't really need him. Shooting for a 67-seat majority but needing only 61 for a majority, Lieberman's six seats seem disposable. Now that Lieberman is officially heading to the opposition, Likud officials are warning that 61 probably isn't enough. On paper, it is, of course, a majority in the 126 seat in this set. Yet, packed with Israel's ultra-right-wing parties, it would only take one or two members of the coalition to collapse the government at any given time. Such a narrow majority gives even the small factions within the member parties a lot of power to block legislation, and officials warn that the majority won't last long and Israel could be heading for another early election. Even getting to the 61-seat majority is no guarantee. Likud announced a deal with Shas, finally, but they still need to get the Jewish home to a agree to a coalition, and leader Naftali Bennett is expected to demand an extreme amount of influence to sign on the dotted line. Netanyahu is expected to try to avoid another early election by trying to quickly moderate, hoping a little bit of progress on rapprochement with the U.S. and Palestinians could give him a shot at bringing the centrist Zionist Union into a coalition when this one collapses. Zionist Union leaders say that's unlikely, and with Bennett so peace-averse, the coalition could collapse long before any rapprochement really begins. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. 
UPI reports the U.S. Supreme Court on Monday upheld a ban on gay conversion therapy in New Jersey for patients under the age of 18. In the case, King v. Governor of New Jersey, the court declined to hear a challenge on the ban following a similar decision in 2014 that also upheld a similar ban in California. Republican New Jersey Governor Chris Christie signed a bill banning the practice in 2013. Supporters of the therapy attempted to present the issue as a restriction on free speech of doctors and counselors. Justices did not comment after issuing the order dismantling the challenge. The White House recently stated that conversion therapy, a mental treatment intended to repair members of the LGBT community, is not an effective or ethical use of psychiatry among minors and should be abandoned and prohibited at the state level. President Obama advocated legislation banning conversion therapy applied to people under the age of 18 just five months after a 17-year-old transgender girl, Leela Alcorn, committed suicide following the treatment. In Survivor Max by Davi Barker, 11-year-old Max must survive the zombie apocalypse alone in New Hampshire. Slow-moving and non-thinking, the lame brains swarm his home searching for living flesh. Max must apply his porcupine Freedom Scouts training to plan his escape, but first he must prove that he's too smart to die. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook and Amazon or read Chapter 1 free at SurvivorMax.com. Reuters reports police and local volunteers in Nepal found the bodies of about 100 trekkers and villagers buried in an avalanche set off by last month's devastating earthquake and were digging through the snow and ice for signs of dozens more missing. The government began asking foreign teams to wrap up search and rescue operations as hope of finding people alive and the rubble receded. The trekkers' bodies were recovered on Saturday and Sunday at the Langtang village, 40 miles north of Kathmandu, which is on a trekking route popular with Westerners. The entire village, which included 55 guest houses for trekkers, was wiped out by the avalanche. Gautam Rimal, assistant chief district officer in the area where Langtang is located, said local volunteers and police personnel are digging through six feet of snow with shovels looking for more bodies. It's not clear how many people were in Langtang at the time of the avalanche, but other officials said about 120 more people could be buried under the snow. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. After the USDA unveiled its updated roommate food pyramid earlier this week, Department of Agriculture spokesman Michael Lowry spoke to Onion reporters about just how many servings of someone else's food roommates should be consuming on a day-to-day -day basis. Under the new guidelines, roommates should eat at least four portions of someone else's grains per day including one to two cups of already opened cereal. Of course, this is all in addition to the eight to 16 swigs of milk and orange juice spaced out over a few days. Lowry emphasized that many aspects of the new roommate food pyramid are unchanged from the previous version, including a recommended daily intake of 24 ounces of lunch meat straight from the bag and five to seven weekly finger scoops of Erica's peanut butter. Remember to limit your intake of sugar and sweets from half open containers, especially if they're Jessica's, cause she'll definitely notice. For more on this story, check this week's Onion Review. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live, 855-450 free. It's 855-450-3733. You can call in and talk about whatever is on your mind here on this live edition of Free Talk Live. It's Mark with you. Johnny Ray. And Cantwell. 855-450-FREE. So, Cantwell, apparently, um, Josh Wheaton, the uh, director of this uh, extraordinarily popular movie, uh, Avengers 2, Age of Ultron, I guess it's the second highest grossing film of all time right behind Avengers. Uh the I think it was the the third uh debut, the third biggest debut in history. Okay. Yeah. Um so clearly doing rather well. But apparently it made some social justice warriors a little upset. Oh, did it? It was crazy. I actually I spent my entire day on Twitter today. It was obnoxious the the uh, So anyway, I'll tell you about that later but uh so i've actually got the the story here in breitbart the the uh, headline of it is J joss whedon deletes twitter account after rabid feminist avengers backlash um 
and stop now loading. Josh Whedon, I'd like to to make this I think it's clear. Joss. Joss. J O S S. Oh, okay. Um, he's quite the liberal. Right. Like he's got he's, he's he's in front of all these causes and this sort of thing. So to have the left turn on him like this has got to be pretty unnerving. For I him. thought I thought he was quite the libertarian. I can't back. No, that up. he is. a He's a lefty. And he's said a lot of like feminist things, too. I think he said something about Jurassic Park. Uh, I've seen this quote thrown around a little bit, and I'm sure it's somewhere in this uh, in this Breitbart article. They uh there was a couple of things. He's 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 frequently been on the side of the feminists. So when they turn around on him, it's just so telling that they're just man haters. It, it has nothing to do with, um, you know, standing up for rights or anything like that. This guy has absolutely been their ally for many many years, and they just turned on him. Well, I mean, to some extent, he's he's left with the franchise he's left with, right? Like the Avengers, the comic book series that was started in nineteen nineteen sixty one, uh, maybe sixty two is not exactly heavy um, in folks that carry around two X chromosomes. It's just not generally the case. They haven't trotted out these characters yet. You have to have some backstory. They brought in three characters in this movie, and one of them is female. So it's 33% of the characters that were brought in new in this uh, movie were female. And one of the characters that was uh, brought in, uh, the you know, the returning characters, that's that's 20% of the characters, is uh, female. So Scarlett Johansson's the Black Widow. Yeah, she's the Black Widow. And, she, you know, they, they portray the Black Widow, I think, quite well. She got the third most screen time behind Iron Man, the creator, uh, you know, one of the founding members of the uh, Avengers, and Captain America, the leader and founding, one of the founding members of Avengers. Interestingly, Captain America didn't come along until issue four, so there were three issues without him, but he's still considered a founding member, whereas Hawkeye, who came in the next year, at like issue 17 or 14 or something like that, I can't remember exactly, is not considered a founding member. What about Ant-Man? Ant Man was a founding member, uh, Giant Man, but he switched over to being Giant Man. I think in issue two or three. Okay, Ant Man became Giant Man. That's correct. G I, G -G -I and then put it on the front of Giant Ant, Ant Man. Um, if you're if you've got a magic particle that can make you shrink, then why can't that particle make you grow? Right, like the particle makes you grow back from being shrunk. So why couldn't you use it in reverse and then grow upwards? So Giant Man can be, I think, sixty feet tall or something like that. Well, that would qualify him as giant man. Yeah, I would. Does he is he possessed of the proportionate strength of a giant? Yes, he is possessed of the proportionate strength, but not he's 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 nothing compared to say Hulk or Thor, um, probably on the lines of Captain America. Okay. All right. This well, is completely I, over my head. I have no idea with this comic book stuff. I, I don't even know why anybody cares. But. I worked at a comic book store for six years, um, and Avengers was my favorite, so I am certainly a fan. And I want to see the franchise do well. I'm delighted that Marvel's doing well here. And I think that Joss Whedon um, has done a fantastic job both creating strong female characters and... Um, portraying the Avengers at the same time. He's got to work with what he's got. A lot of good it did him. I got the article at Breitbart here. It says, uh, Director Joss Whedon deleted his Twitter account Monday after a stream of hateful messages directed at him by feminists upset with the story elements of Avengers Age of Ultron, the weekend's big box office smash. Tech Times reports that Whedon's final tweet was an implicit goodbye. He wrote, Thank you to all the people who've been so kind and funny and inspiring up in here. Uh, while Whedon himself hasn't said why he deleted his account with over one million followers, it likely has something to do with the angry back backlash he was facing from feminist critics of his latest tentpole Marvel film. The Twitter user uh, Astojap collected a dozen of the tweets aimed at Whedon. Here is just a sample. So uh, we've got uh, uh, Joss Whedon, you call yourself a feminist, yet you make rape jokes and treat female characters like S. I'm not sure what the rape jokes were, but um, okay. I, I understand why feminists might have uh, be of the opinion that the that their characters weren't treated well enough because, uh, like for instance, Black Widow was used as a damsel in distress during the movie. It's a bit of a trope, but and I thought it was oddly um, inserted in the movie. But you know, I mean, it's a movie, and it can only be so long, and you can only. Uh, you know, care you know, spend so much time on characterization. Plus, let's not forget. 
I worked. Right, you got to make choices. Yeah, I worked at a comic book store, and I can tell you the amount of women who came in and bought comic books compared to the amount of men, rather small. Yes, they are doing much better in creating comics for women, but Avengers wasn't never one of those. Why did they bother making comics for women? It's just stupid. You're you have a you have a male audience. Cater to your demographic. Well, you don't have to. When uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to comics, you can put out different issues that appeal to different folks. Archie was much more um, even as far as males and females, but they stopped Archie. I think I think that, I don't think they produce any more of them, but maybe they just stopped one of the titles. So it makes sense that, for instance, DC is going to capitalize on the popularity of Harley Quinn or Batgirl, and Marvel's going to take uh, the franchise uh, Ms. Marvel, which is you know the title been bebopped around for a few different characters. Why not turn it into a, a Muslim a teenage girl and see how that flies? These people ruin everything. Well, you don't have to have all white superheroes. It would be really unusual if ever, only white people got superpowers. I suppose you could make an argument for it from some kind of genetic standpoint, but it is odd that there's a remarkable amount of white superheroes compared to the rest. Somebody should do a comic where Muhammad is the superhero. <laughs> Somebody should get bombed, right? Somebody who's not me. <laughs> Somebody. <laughs> so let's uh, let me give you some more of these tweets here. So uh, let's see. Um, uh, Crin Loserface says Josh Josh Whedon is a sexist piece of s. Uh, uh, Booney Boyer says can Josh Whedon not be a sexist f boy? Uh, uh, Corbin <laughs> says, block me ugly, sexist mayo jar. <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know. I guess it's a joke so about he, his he's weight. He's asking to be blocked and calling him a sexist mayo, mayo jar. Yes. Okay, I'm not sure what that means. It, it sounds like a fat joke. Yeah, it's, it's full it's, of mayonnaise. As a man, he's full of mayonnaise. I see. <laughs> the criticisms seem to mostly stem from two issues connected to Avengers Age of Ultron. Be aware there are some spoilers in what follows. Should we not do that? Um, oh, I think you already did, didn't you? Yeah, well, you know, here here it is. Spoiler alert. Okay. If you're not an adult, you can't handle it fine. <laughs> the first issue is a throw... I didn't mention the big spoiler. The first issue is a throwaway joke during the scene in which the Avengers... Tur- and Avengers take turns trying to lift Thor's hammer. When Tony Stark, Robert Downey Jr., makes his attempt, he says that as a ruler of Asgard, he intends to reinstitute Prima Nocta. Prima Nocta is the right of kings to sleep with any woman on the night of her wedding. BuzzFeed's movie critic referred to this as a, quote, weird, old-timey rape joke. So that's where the rape joke reference comes in. So okay. he talked about Prima Nocta, and that's the rape joke, apparently. But this is Tony Stark. He's a character that is known for alcohol swilling and womanizing. You can't, you can't un- you, you can't unwrap the character if that's the character. So far, Robert Downey Jr. has done a really great job of, you know, having this womanizing drunk be extraordinarily but this popular. this is what I'm talking about. These people, they ruin everything. They're just miserable SOBs. I, I really, I'm looking at them on Twitter today. It was just a completely miserable uh, uh, wine fest. And it's, I, I don't want to live in the same planet as them. What do you think? Um, j- Hang yourselves. Is, is Joss Wheaton a sexist, or is this just a bunch of social justice warriors crying? 855-450 free. Honestly, we canceled an appointment to have Jake euthanized to give Dynavite a chance to save this dog's life. Jake is an eight-year-old male Akita. His entire stomach and groin area, his face, his elbows, his ears, every orifice was just riddled with yeast and sores. We had a vet treat him, and Jake didn't respond at all. My son heard the commercial for Dynavite, D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. 859-428-1000. The omega-3 fatty acids. Flaxseed, zinc, alfalfa. The digestive enzymes that are cooked out of regular dog food. Within four Four days, Jake started to heal. It was the most amazing thing I have ever seen. The yeast is receding, and now his belly is completely cleared up. It chokes me up. It brings tears to my eyes. Everything we tried failed except the Dynavite. 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm. This time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. 
With the debt to GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American. Covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. Free Talk Live. The TSA increasing the invasiveness of their pat-downs. They're no longer going to use the backsides of their hands. They're going to be touching Now they're going to be grabbing it full on. That's right, all over. And what is their justification for this? I've heard this, but that's I all the terrorism that's not. been happening. That, uh, why you know, do they have to use the front of their hands now? Well, did, the, was there any was there an event? Did they use a certain event where something got through no. that no. they would have felt if they'd used the front of their hands instead no. of the back of their hands? They just no. want to encourage you to go through the new sniffing what is their, device. What's, or, what's, yeah, what's going what to be their explanation when they need, when they have to use their penis to pat you down? <laughs> what is the, what is their justification going to be then? <laughs> my hands aren't sensitive enough to catch everything. <laughs> well, it's not like you can read. Braille with that thing, my friend. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. They, I mean, well, your lips are very sensitive. Oh, you have a lot of nerve endings in your lips. So, when They're... the hands are no longer good enough. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts and Roberts Burgridge, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. It's 855-450-3733. You can call in and talk about whatever's on your mind this evening. It's Mark with you. Johnny Ray. And Cantwell. 855-450-FREE. If you're wondering where Ian is, well, he can't work seven nights a week. He gets one night a week off, and this is it. He uh, kind of takes a sliding night off somewhere between Tuesday and Thursday. I think, yeah, when he does that, then you go read ChristopherCantwell.com for hours on end because he loves that website. He does. He yeah. just pours over it. <laughs> I think he's uh, running off to uh, Manchester for a new movers party. People are moving to the Free State Pro- to New Hampshire for the Free State Project. You can find out more about it at freestateproject.org. What the idea is is that, um, well, if you are if you're a believer in the ideas of liberty, you're probably and you don't live in New Hampshire, you're probably frustrated. If you're you're likely live if you live in New Hampshire, you're probably still frustrated. Yes, <laughs> but mm, perhaps you have a little bit of hope. Yeah. Uh, if you believe in liberty and you have a television or an internet connection, <laughs> you're probably pretty frustrated. So, uh, well, you know, the Free Taste Free State Project is intended to be a, some kind of solution for that. So, check it out, freestateproject.org. So, we're reading this story from Breitbart.com, and apparently, the director of Avengers, Age of Ultron, they don't really throw the two in there on this one, but that's what it is, right? I mean, it's the sequel to Avengers. Yeah. Uh, he he deleted his Twitter account. And at this point, it's only presumably that it's because a whole bunch of people, uh, you know, social justice warrior types called him all kinds of names because they didn't like how the the Avengers movie sort of played out. 
Yeah. I guess there's a few uh, contentious points. Yeah, there's sort of this, uh, you know, group of a very large group of people on social media who basically want to destroy all things good. Uh, they basically are hell bent on destroying the human race. I think. Well, everybody who gets a uh, something caught in their craw, as you know, anybody who calls themselves an ist, um, chances are good they believe that the world is made worse by the thing on the other side of the coin from their ist, right? And um, so, in the case of the feminists, it's that there's this thing called the patriarchy running amuck, 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 and we must point out the patriarchy whenever it's uh, you know shows itself. Right. Whenever I don't like how anything in the world is portrayed, then I will jump down the throat of who. Whoever it is, and the more powerful you are, the, the the worse I will treat you. I mean, you know, there was the the thing uh, Matt Taylor from the European Space Agency. They came after him because he had sexy girls on his shirt while he was landing a rocket on a comet. Yeah. And they're saying, well, this is the reason women aren't in STEM, and that's why we need equality. And now it's like, oh, because somebody said prima nocta in a in a fictional movie this is a uh, rape culture and we're gonna ruin this uh this uh, this guy's career who just did made the third largest movie debut in history right i mean a character that is intended to be a womanizer and is shown as a womanizer you can decide to, to you can decide what you think about Tony Stark being a womanizer for yourself. They're not, they kind of leave that, they're somewhat agnostic on that. But, uh, you know, I mean, I don't understand why a, uh, um, a feminist would particularly have a problem with uh, with somebody who's a womanizer. Because they don't want that guy to exist. That's perhaps the reason. I, I guess uh, that the joke, so the joke is that Tony Stark is uh, trying to lift Thor's hammer. No one can lift it, although Captain America would jiggles it a little bit. Okay, I thought there was. I thought I remembered something from like a teaser I saw months ago where Thor got uh, really apprehensive about that. Yeah, and it does show the skill of the actor that he was able to, you know, portray that, and while no one else was looking, it was just really. I, I thought it was great. Excellent. So, what does that mean about Captain America? It means that he is nearly worthy enough to carry the uh, hammer of Thor. And what makes you worthy? Just general bog standard virtue, pure heartedness. I think you have to be virtuous courageous perhaps it's a strength issue too like you have to be worthy to sit on the throne of asgard and uh, you know this is this fictional place uh you know you're essentially the ruler of the nine realms um yeah joss whedon should have had an asgard on twitter <laughs> so, uh, 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 i see what you did there very good <laughs> But um, I, I imagine this is pretty painful for Joss. He's uh, he's he's pretty pretty much a lefty, and this has got a sting that his people have turned on him. He tried to deliver the best movie he possibly could deliver, and it wasn't good enough. And they hate his success. My strong female characters, not good enough. Well, and that's the thing. I mean, they they were saying in here. Um, what do you call? Them? Uh, 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 late in the film, um, I'm sorry, I wanted to pull up this particular part. Um, Whedon has been uh, vocal recently about the portrayal of women in films other than his own. Last month, he criticized a clip of the forthcoming film Jurassic World, saying the characters were, quote, 70s-era sexist. Earlier this year, Whedon was also critical of the portrayal of the lead character in the Twilight films, which he suggested boiled down to, quote, choosing boyfriends, the movie. So, I mean, this guy <laughs> has... And and you know what? I'm now I'm glad it happened to him when I'm reading that. Okay, so if he's gonna go out and he's gonna go do this to other people, I'm really glad it happened to him and he gets to see what it's like because it's sick what these people uh, do to people. They see anybody succeeding in any way and they want to just destroy it. They are they are hell bent on destroying anything positive in this world. Well, um, it's. You know, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. If you, uh, you know, sting out, send out stinging Twitter tweets, it's not unlikely that you'll get a few of them back. No doubt about it. It's probably for him very painful because it was, uh, you know, uh, it, was, it was his people, as it were. I love his work. I think he has done a fantastic job with the two Avengers franchises. I don't have anything bad to say about his skill as a director or what he's produced. I do tend to be the the hallelujah section when it comes to Avengers stuff. I get it, but I, I don't feel like it was poorly treated. I'm not after him for that reason. I just kind of, you know, well, yeah, this is the way it goes. This is what it feels like. And that's... You know, it's got to be painful. Yeah, it's uh, I'm, I'm, and I'm glad. I'm glad it's painful. Let's go to Brett. Wants to talk about this issue. Brett, you're on Free Talk Live. 
Hey, what's up, guys? Oh, um, lots of things. I was uh, on Twitter all day today. Go ahead, Brett. <laughs> I just wanted to chime in on this. I feel like feminism has kind of turned into opportunism. Like, I don't know. I mean, I, it's it's hard to express like how I feel about it, but this is not the 1960s anymore. You know, we women do not face the same um, you know strife that they did 50 years ago, and. You know, it's I, I, I just I feel like now with these social justice warriors, you know, going all over on Twitter and Tumblr and all this, stuff, like they're just looking they're 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 actively looking for issues. They're like communists. Not, you know, I mean, I, I, they, I guess they, they are I, communists. I OK, they are they're on there screaming about equality, 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 equality. And it's like, look, if you are demanding equality, that's really in, it, that's an implication of your inferiority. Right. If you're demanding equality, you're necessarily like not equal. You're demanding to be brought up. You're going and chasing government policies to change economics and everything else. Right. And they are they are fundamentally out there to destroy good things. And so contradictory. Right. Because they claim like. Oh, women are strong, you know, we're empowered and we're blah, blah, blah. But then they still claim that this so-called patriarchy is like holding them down. And it's like, OK, make, make up your mind. Like what you know, what is it? I, 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 I'm always befuddled by it. It doesn't make any sense to me. When I think about uh, women's strength in society, I think of, uh, you know, from a marketing standpoint, they send they spend 70 percent of household dollars. I think it's um, higher than that. Yeah. And I mean, you know, <laughs> they're the oftentimes considered the manager of the house. They pick brands and these sorts of things. Anyway, like that's all I had to say, guys. Thanks, thanks Brett. 855 450 free. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. 
This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for under $30,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet under $30,000. Many Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. Call 800-917-8251. 800-917-8251. 800-917-8251. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. It's 855-450-FREE. You can call in and talk about whatever is on your mind this evening. It's Mark with you. Johnny Ray. And Cantwell. 855-450-3733. We got our shipment of Sherry's Berries a couple of days ago. It's Mother's Day, and they, they always advertise with us. Well, it's because they know our listeners have moms and wives and the kind of folks that you buy berries for on <laughs> mother's day gals who you want to turn into mothers <laughs> i suppose <laughs> it's not a bad idea it can't go poorly when you when you give something that is so delicious as the uh, the sherry's berries they are some of the best things i've ever put in my mouth they're so tasty they're premium berries they reject about half of the berries that they get because well you know when you get the berries from the grocery store eh, about half of them are sour not with Sherry's berries. These are the best berries. I don't know that half of them are sour. That's my experience. With? That's my experience. Yeah, it's crapshoot. Yeah, I, I, I've, you know, some of them they just don't. They're not, not, not quite ripe or whatever. They're not like as good. They're, they're not, not as, as good. As good, but I don't know about sour. Some of uh, I think you just plain it up for the advertiser mark. The I find it even more true with like blackberries. You know, with blackberries, I feel like it's one in four. The perpetual <laughs> racism on this program really upsets me. <laughs> I hadn't even considered that. <laughs> Berries.com, B-E-R-R-I-E-S.com to get these premium berries dipped in white milk or dark chocolate goodness topped with milk chocolate chips, excuse me, chocolate chips, nuts or decorative swizzle, and there's all kinds of other options over there, uh, berries, cake truffles, brownie pops, pretzels, and more. You use our coupon code FTL and you will save over 40%. So they've got them starting at uh, nineteen ninety nine at berries.com. So you go to berries.com, B-E-R-R-I-E-S.com. There's a microphone in the upper right-hand corner. You click on that, you enter FTL, and you get the savings at berries.com. Did, did you say they have, like, pretzels and stuff? Too? Yeah, they do. They have these chocolate-covered pretzels. Why do they have to put chocolate on everything? Well, that's, that's what they – they have premium chocolate. That's how they make their money. They also have mm. this uh, kind of – I don't, I don't know what it is, but there's this pink stuff on the strawberries. We never got those um, to try them out, but they, they appear to have something there that is uh, more of a candy coating for the, the strawberries. I'd be interested in trying it, but mm. I haven't. Uh, since I get the box of uh, free ones, I just haven't considered ordering the others. Maybe it's a strawberry coating. Yeah, I bet my I'd mother be for would that. like it, though. I want like a candy-coated strawberry. That sounds awesome. Yep. Go to berries.com, enter coupon code FTL, and uh, see it for yourself. Well, I think we have uh, kind of worn out what uh, happened to Joss Wheaton here with the uh, the social justice warriors coming after him and, um, you know, sh- showing why we can't have nice things. There's just there's just nothing to say. It's just you're, you're a bunch of miserable, lousy people who I don't want to share a planet with. Uh, you know, the, um, but the caller uh, just called in. Um, his name's Brett. And I guess I do have some things sort of to say about f- feminism generally. I am of the opinion that, uh, you know, in the past, my mother still has on her credit cards uh, my father's initials. So Mrs., uh, you know, C.E. Edge, right, is on her card or whatever. It's something similar to that. I don't want to give out her name on the air. But um, that's on her card. And 
she so she lives in a time frame. She's coming from a time frame when women had a more difficult time sort of owning property and being recognized as their their peers as far as money goes. But I just had a conversation in the grocery line, I think it was the night before last, and with the two not young gals, these weren't young ladies that were there. They were, you know, women of, I wouldn't call them middle age because that usually means old, but uh, that age that's not young and not old. Um, and they seem to agree that women should control the purse strings in a house. In my house, my wife pays the bills because I have shown myself to not be particularly good at it. Um, you know, things are not going to get necessarily get paid on time. We're going to have to pay late fees. You can only call so many times and say, oops, I'm sorry, can I have a dispensation from your fee? Before they say, no, you can't have it. Uh -huh. And yeah, that's it stings her. It rubs her raw when, somebody, when we have to pay some kind of fee. So, you know, I turned it over to her. My life's been great ever since. That was many years ago, and things have been pretty cool. But I... And I don't know what it's like in other houses, but these gals seem to seem to be that way in their house. Um, when you're he, she who holds the money is the one who makes the rules. And I kind of don't feel like whatever it was that made it tough to be a woman in the past really exists anymore. Like the votes there, property is there. There's all kinds of uh, it's what seems like advantages when it comes to family court. When the when the relationships breaking up, especially if you have kids, it's kind of a rough place to be to be a dad. Um, I, I, I I'm having a difficult time believing that it's difficult on women. There's also this nonsense that goes around about women earning 73% of what men earn. And, you know, they've, this has been disproven over and over again in major news sources. And I don't know where, it, why it keeps getting trotted out. I don't want to hear about I'm oppressing you when my gender is the one that's 90 percent of the prison population. It's a it's a foundationally just ridiculous thing that does not stand up to the slightest bit of scrutiny. And that's why it's associated with the left politically. Right. They are they're fundamentally detached from reality. They don't care what's actually happening. So when you go and you point out what's absolutely factually incorrect about what they're stating, they just say, oh, now you're just mansplaining, mansplaining. Oh, so now I can't can't even correct your ridiculous statement without being accused of some sort of sexist act. It's absolutely fundamentally ridiculous. Yeah, I don't spend any time interacting with people that claim to be feminists. I mean, I, I've got better things to do. My blood pressure doesn't. I don't need it. Um, I don't. I don't interact voluntarily on the internet too much with uh, people that do this kind of stuff. I just find it to be frustrating. I don't write essays for people I dislike. Uh, I don't write essays for people I like, let alone essays for people I dislike. I give three hours a day for people that disagree with me to call in at 855-450-3733. Or LRN.FM on Skype. Or LRN.FM on Skype. If you feel like I'm not saying something, if I need, if my words need to be held to account, that opportunity is here. And if you can do it in a rational, logical, and uh, you know, without spitting vile, you're likely to be on, if you need two segments, we've done that on Free Talk Live. But they're not going to do that because you not set once. the requirement. Never once has a full-on feminist called this show and held us to account. I've never had that gal, the, you know, the one that, uh, you know, I've, I've never, the what, what I see on the internet versus what I get on the show, not one time. People will say, I'm a feminist, but what they mean is, is that they mean that men and women should be equal, which I think is a really bad use of the English language. I wouldn't say, horrific I'm a, use. I'm I'm a masculinist because I want people to be equal. Yeah, if I if I started up Aryanism, I think everybody would assume that that was about something other than equality for races. Right. I, I think it's a ridiculous uh, terminology. I get that women didn't used to be equal, but that doesn't mean that they're not equal today. Yes. No, would... they're not equal today. They shouldn't be equal, and every attempt to make them equal is going to fail and create misery in the society. I don't know what you mean when you say they're not equal. Don't I mean, tell me you don't know what I mean. We've I done don't. this before. Okay, so um, remember, equality is different than fairness. Equality, like three plus one is equal to two plus two. You can have people that are different. Fa equality should mean equality under the law, and it should have nothing else to do with anything else. Societal stuff, uh, you know, so what? Um, I, you know, they say that there's more CEOs that are male. Yeah, but how many of them have wives? And do the women, do the wives enjoy the fruits of the CEO's labor? In which case, you're just talking about a rich couple you're not talking about anything else well i i'd say 
I don't even think it, like equality under the law. So do, do you think it's fundamentally like a bad idea that a, a man would uh, have a harsher penalty if he punched a woman in the face than a woman would have if she punched a man in the face? I, you know, I think that I don't think people should be punching each other in the face. I should, I think it should be based on damage, um, the the damage done to the individual. Well, then we're going to create a demographic disparity there because men have, on average, forty percent more upper body strength, and then there's going to be a problem, right? Fine, don't care. Yes. So, uh, so I would say that you're not going to have equal treatment under the law at that point. But if a woman picks up a, see, this is the thing: is God made, um, you know, God made man. No, he Sam, didn't. Sam Sam Colt made him equal, is the old saying. And right now, a seven-year-old girl can be equal. Anybody who can pull a trigger on a handgun can be equal to the biggest, baddest person on the planet. I advocate for people to be physically. You, you feel you feel threatened by men? Fine, carry a gun and use it when you have been legitimately threatened. That's what I'm saying. 855-450 free. Free Talk Live. Well, I did it. I finally left the Empire behind. And now that I'm safely settled in Chile, I'm gathering with others like me to build a new community called Fort Galt. Fort Galt is designed to be the ideal home base for professionals and their families to live and work in peace. If you're ready to ditch the super state and bring your business to freer lands, visit us online at fortgalt.com. That's Fort Galt. Indefinite extension of the human lifespan is coming. But is it coming soon enough for you and me? That's the $80,000 question. I say $80,000 because that's what it costs to have your head cryonically frozen by Alcor. I've committed to do it. I got a life insurance policy, and I made them the uh, beneficiaries. Bam, my best shot at living forever. Interested? Contact them at Alcor.org. A-L-C-O-R dot O-R-G. Mention my name and I get a free year of membership. You pick up the receiver with your heart racing and sweat dripping from your forehead. You finally muster the courage to dial the number to call into your favorite talk radio show. It rings once, twice, and then... Hello, it's GCN. What's your name in the state you're calling from? Surprised you got through, you squeak out. Jason from Minnesota. Please hold. As you patiently wait for your turn, you begin to daydream about being a famous talk radio host and what it would be like to have your own show. Jason from Minnesota, you're up. Millions of loyal listeners worldwide waiting to call and talk to you. Caller, are you there? Cheering crowds surround you, calling out your name. Going once, twice. Okay, we gotta move on to the next caller. You blew it. Huh? Wait, no! Interact with the hosts you're listening to right now online at GCNlive.com. Click on the community link. Engage with other listeners. Ask questions. Start debates. Don't agree with a host? Let them know. Be a part of the community at GCNlive.com. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, 
website or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. 855-450-3733. It's 855-450-FREE. You can call in, talk about whatever's on your mind. We've been, well, kind of jumped around to uh, from Joss Wheaton, the director of uh, Mar- Avengers Age of Ultron, to just sort of the topic of feminism generally. Now, you don't need to be on topic here on Free Talk Live. That's not how this works. That's why we call it Free Talk Live. But... You know, that's what we've been talking about, and oftentimes it spurs conversation. So you can call in at 855-450-FREE and talk about that or anything else. But if you're listening to us online, if you probably have a computer and you probably go online, and if you go online, you need to protect yourself. Your internet service provider is saving your surfing history and will turn it over to any governmental agency that asks, and many times people that just sound like a governmental agency. Uh, Criminals are trying to sniff your Wi-Fi packets. Governments and corporations are limiting what you can see on the Internet. ProXPN can solve all that. Simply download their app for Windows, Mac, iOS, or Android, even Linux. And then you just, once you get it uploaded, you just connect to the Internet and you're protected from all that stuff. No more prying, no more spying. One account works for all your devices. No need to have a separate account for each device. You go to ProXPN.com slash FTL and use promo code FTL50 and you'll get 50% off of an annual account. That's like five five bucks a month. And this protects you in many ways on the internet. Um, You'll get the savings for the lifetime of the account no matter which premium account you go with. So that's not just for the first year or the first three months or whatever. It's for the lifetime of the account. With the premium account, you get unlimited bandwidth with servers all around the world, the ability to privately torrent, get past regionally blocked websites, and ProXPN.com doesn't keep track of your records. They'll get you'll get all that with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. ProXPN.com slash FTL promo code FTL50 for a great discount on privacy. That Mark, is priceless. Yes, sir. I recently talked to a guy who was a seller on eBay. And for whatever reason, I actually don't remember what it was. He was flagged by eBay. And they knew his ISP, and he couldn't trade with them anymore. I think he was maybe short-circuiting some some regulatory uh, statutes. I, I don't know. Actually, I'm, I'm just making that up. It, it could be that. It could be something else. But I wonder if ProXPN might be able to help a guy uh, whose ISP or— Yes. Yes, thank you. That's ISP. it. They absolutely can. Okay. Because your uh, your internet service provider doesn't know what you're doing if you are using ProXPN.com. It is just a bunch of cryptographic gobbledygook. And, um, you know, eBay wouldn't know where you're coming from. You could be, you know, to, to them, you're some random person coming from Singapore or Amsterdam. They have no idea where you're coming from. Excellent. So there you go. Let's go to the phones and to the fun. Glenn calling in. Glenn, you're on Free Talk Live. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. Uh, I certainly have no interest in sniffing anyone's packet. Yes, it's, it is a <laughs> disturbing term. Yeah. yeah. The, um, hey, did you say spitting bile, B-I-L-E? Bile, B-I-L-E. Oh, B-I-L-E. Okay, I was going to say, I was going to say, I was, I've heard that. No, I heard I that, was, too. I, was, I think you I, said vile, I was, or maybe it just sounded that way. Yeah, well, the the English language, I, I bile and vile. It was, I was thinking maybe it was spewing vitriol that you were going for. V- vitriol would be another way to say it, right? Like, uh, you know. Spewing vitriol, yeah. Um, about uh, feminism, I, you, the one caller called in talked about, you know, feminism kind of turning ugly. This conversation usually involves, like, recognizing three generations or three waves of feminism. Right. You know, like, first wave would be everything from suffrage to ERA, let's say, roughly equal rights amendment which is a short little 40-some word statement saying that women should get equal pay for equal work. Then second generation, you had the emphasis on, you know, propelling women into, you know, places of, of achievement, power recognition, breaking the glass ceiling, which is fine. That's why we have Carly Fiorina, you know, you know, an ex-CEO of HP, 
running for the presidency, you know. And that, but then third generation feminism is when it's gotten ugly because it's about using femininity, girl power, sexuality in an aggressive and anti-male and you know vindictive manner. It's kind of what the well, they only use sexuality up until yeah. it's convenient to no longer use sexuality, and it's it's like there's it's not even one group. It's a bunch of different people, right. sort of with their own version of it. There's these sex positive uh, feminists, and then mm-hmm. I don't know what the other ones are called. Sex negative feminists would be the other side. I don't know what the answer to that is, but well, that. They're, they're constantly well, they're warring amongst themselves. I, from time to time, make the mistake of going out and reading these fanatics' blogs, Mark, and it is terrifying. You go on, like, uh, feministing.org, and uh, um, I used to read Kathy Reisenwitz and all these fanatics. Um, they... The whole thing, and I'm and I'm going to go ahead and tell you, it, it was it was garbage from the start. People always do this with the first, second, and third wave, and and I'm I'm certain that it's gotten progressively worse over time. But these people have been fundamentally out of touch with reality. That's the that's been the whole entire point of it. They're trying to uproot uh, uh, gender roles in general, right? I mean, even even women's suffrage. Like the reason that they didn't have yeah. suffrage was because they could not be drafted, right? And it doesn't make sense to draft women into a military because you know it's not like a well, good thing for you to go send your women off to die in a war zone. Well, they they played, uh, yeah, well, and actually even the suffrage movement was mis- manipulated by guys who like Edward L. Bernays, who sold smoking to the women as torches of liberty. So even there you have manipulation. But the, the women equal, women's equality has been a nightmare for the military because women can't carry another soldier out of the battlefield. The guy, you know, guys in training had to pick up uh, the weight of an equal weight you know, person and carry it around a, a quarter mile track. Well, I, women can't do that. They I, can't do the. It, well, they can though. if they they can if they can, and they can't if they can't. I but did they, have a friend can. who yeah. was a firefighter, and she passed the the the, the test um, that Fine. was required of male Fine. firefighters. And so there you go. You've got this one in a hundred or one in, probably one in a thousand uh, body type that this gal has, um, where she's able to do it. There should be a set of right. rules. And who can, you know, if it's a physical job, yeah. then, and you can fulfill the, the obligations of the physical job, fine. There's lots of skinny people. I wouldn't want to be carried out of a firefight by Ian either. Um, you right, know, I'm right, right, right. going to have my head hit in a rock on many times. They've, lo- they've lowered every standard to accommodate the fact that most cannot. And then, like, in the, it's an, and, and it's not been good for women in the military, especially the, the rape st- stats in the no, military. No, it's been terrible. Yeah. Even, at the, even, even at the academies. So, you know, I, I, I'm always, I, I can agree. I, I never had any problems with the ERA. You know, if a woman's cranking out, if we're sitting in computer cubicles and she's cranking out as much or more than me, then sure, she deserves the same pay. You but know, the, but the I, marketplace I, will deal with that, right? It's it's fundamentally uh-huh. ridiculous that they're talking about this this pay gap thing. Okay, equal pay for equal work. Well, if you're if you were equally productive, then you would get equal pay. It's fundamentally ridiculous to think that employers are paying thirty three percent more for their workforces just because patriarchy. I can tell you the um, Free Talk Live hasn't had doesn't really have employees, but we have paid. Uh, we we had a paid host at one point. The only paid host who was regularly on was a woman, and uh, you know, and so, if I understand right, she had a lefty feminist bent to her as well. Well, she uh, she represented a different form of uh, libertarianism than perhaps uh, you two can't. Well, but yeah, I mean, so it, that she was the voice oh, yeah. artist for Markets Not Capitalism. It's true. And you hear this, this craziness, like in the 90s, you know, but you start to hear, like, all men are rapists and all sex is rape and all that kind of crap. Yes, I've, well, this is still going on. Uh, the the, the, the yeah. PIV sex, they're very specific. This is penis in vagina sex, um, as is referred mm. to. Um, and <laughs> it's somehow or another that specifically is rape. And I don't know. I haven't read enough, but I've heard the claims, and it's just so silly to me. I, it's like, really? Because I've... I, I've met women that that seem to like this. Right, it's it's just insane. And yet they won't take on the um, female, uh, you know, circumcision, the genital mutilation in in Islam. You know, and, and it's like there's. It's easier to complain about whatever's going on here. Um, if if women aren't in politics, well, that's not. It's not. It's not a the patriarchy's fault. From what I understand, um, from a somebody who operates a political operative here in New Hampshire, that if a woman runs, she can expect at least a three to five percent bump in the polls simply by having the possession of a uterus, and that is, you know, that is systemic societal sexism. 
What am I going to do about it? Nothing. How many people are, are, are ready for Hillary and can't name a single one of her policies? Yeah, I can. T- I I have met people that will vote specifically will, uh, women who will vote for women because they are women. That is a terrible right. reason. Right. I do not vote for men because they are men. Right. Thanks. Did for- they lose the statistical bump if they've had a hysterectomy? No. <laughs> Thanks. No. For the yeah, call, it's not Glenn. the uterus. It's the <laughs> two X chromosomes. Yeah. Free talk yeah, live. Eight five five four five zero three seven three three. I said earlier. I have never had the feminist call and explain things to me. They never how, will. How can I be expected to understand the nuances of this philosophy? I, I mean, am, am I just supposed to go out and read and, and get it? Because everything I read, it just sounds like a bunch of nuts rambling about stuff. Please explain it to me. 855 453. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine freedom scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. Watching the game again, I thought you were booking our vacation hotel. Done. What? We're staying at America's Best Value Inn, and I scored a triple play when I joined their free value club. Really? You get 15% off, a room upgrade, and late checkout when available, plus free Wi-Fi and continental breakfast at most of their 1,000 hotels. Wow, that really is a slam dunk. Uh, Home run, honey. I think you mean home run. Score big this summer at America's Best Value Inn at abvi.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, May 5th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.59 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,196 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $236. Antiwar.com reports during the extremely slow-moving coalition negotiations in Israel, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu had a luxury in dealing with the Foreign Minister Avigdor Lieberman. He didn't really need him. Shooting for a 67-seat majority but needing only 61 for a majority, Lieberman's six seats seem disposable. Now that Lieberman is officially heading to the opposition, Likud officials are warning that 61 probably isn't enough. On paper, it is, of course, a majority in the 120 seat Nisset. Yet, packed with Israel's ultra-right-wing parties, it would only take one or two members of the coalition to collapse the government at any given time. Such a narrow majority gives even the small factions within the member parties a lot of power to block legislation, and officials warn that the majority won't last long and Israel could be heading for another early election. Even getting to the 61-seat majority is no guarantee. Likud announced a deal with Shas, finally, but they still need to get the Jewish home to a 
agree to a coalition, and leader Naftali Bennett is expected to demand an extreme amount of influence to sign on the dotted line. Netanyahu is expected to try to avoid another early election by trying to quickly moderate, hoping a little bit of progress on rapprochement with the U.S. and Palestinians could give him a shot at bringing the centrist Zionist Union into a coalition when this one collapses. Zionist Union leaders say that's unlikely, and with Bennett so peace-averse, the coalition could collapse long before any rapprochement really begins. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports the U.S. Supreme Court on Monday upheld a ban on gay conversion therapy in New Jersey for patients under the age of 18. In the case, King v. Governor of New Jersey, the court declined to hear a challenge on the ban following a similar decision in 2014 that also upheld a similar ban in California. Republican New Jersey Governor Chris Christie signed a bill banning the practice in 2013. Supporters of the therapy attempted to present the issue as a restriction on free speech of doctors and counselors. Justices did not comment after issuing the order dismantling the challenge. The White House recently stated that conversion therapy, a mental treatment intended to repair members of the LGBT community, is not an effective or ethical use of psychiatry among minors and should be abandoned and prohibited at the state level. President Obama advocated legislation banning conversion therapy applied to people under the age of 18 just five months after a 17-year-old transgender girl, Leela Alcorn, committed suicide following the treatment. In Survivor Max by Davi Barker, 11-year-old Max must survive the zombie apocalypse alone in New Hampshire. Slow-moving and non-thinking, the lame brains swarm his home searching for living flesh. Max must apply his porcupine Freedom Scouts training to plan his escape, but first he must prove that he's too smart to die. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook and Amazon or read Chapter 1 free at SurvivorMax.com. Reuters reports police and local volunteers in Nepal found the bodies of about 100 trekkers and villagers buried in an avalanche set off by last month's devastating earthquake and were digging through the snow and ice for signs of dozens more missing. The government began asking foreign teams to wrap up search and rescue operations as hope of finding people alive in the rubble receded. The trekkers' bodies were recovered on Saturday and Sunday at the Langtang village, 40 miles north of Kathmandu, which is on a trekking route popular with Westerners. The the entire village, which included 55 guest houses for trekkers, was wiped out by the avalanche. Gautam Rimal, assistant chief district officer in the area where Ling Tang is located, said local volunteers and police personnel are digging through six feet of snow with shovels looking for more bodies. It's not clear how many people were in Ling Tang at the time of the avalanche, but other officials said about 120 more people could be buried under the snow. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. This is William Chambers, now a retired insurance salesman. Chambers is just one of over 95% of grandfathers who, according to a new report from the Center of Business Intelligence, secured their first and only job by walking right up to the owner of a business and asking for a position right then and there. I slammed my fist on the desk and said, I'm your man. He stood right up. He shook my hand and he said, you come in first thing Monday morning. According to the report, nearly 36% of grandfathers claim that they found employment by entering a local business with nothing but a nickel in their pockets and a shirt on their backs. 24% saw a fine looking marquee for a business and said, someday my name's going to be on that sign. And 40% of grandfathers said they snuck into the CEO's office and said, Mr. McKinley, sir, I'm your guy. It just took gumption. You didn't need some fancy internship looking the boss dead in the eye and showing him you were a man. That was your internship. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live, 855-450 free. It's 855-450-3733. You can call in and talk about anything. We've been 
kind of riffing on feminism ever since uh, we read this Breitbart article about Joss Wheaton, the director of uh, Avengers Age of Ultron, getting just bombarded on Twitter by his own peeps. Um, and it's got to be kind of rough for him. It's Mark with you. Johnny Ray. And Cantwell. 855-450-3733. Let's... Uh, you can call in and talk about whatever you want. Uh, this is the topic right now. You can stick with that or go elsewhere. Let's go to Nathan calling in on Skype. Our username is lrn.fm. Nathan, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Well, I was actually going to call in tomorrow about feminism, but since you brought it up and gone into such depth, I thought I'd call in today. Good to hear from you. Well, uh, I wanted to kind of push push back against what Cantwell was saying that feminism was always bad from the inception, and uh, to do that, I wanted that? to illustrate. I, didn't hear that at all. I did. I did say that. Okay. Well, he that's did. the kind of thing he says. He's that way. Yes. <laughs> so I wanted to illustrate my case by referring to the latest episode of Mad Men, which is a TV show based in a 1960s corporate advertising agency. Are we really going uh, to use a TV show to sort of show, some, show something historical? Go ahead. Well. Well, that's the thing. The whole premise of the show is that it's supposed to be historically accurate and people are raving about this and that sort of thing. So that's why I'm using this example. It's still Spoiler an interpretation alert. of history, right? Yeah. Um, right. Uh, you know, I mean, I've seen these articles out there where, uh, you know, the, the claim is, is that men used to think it was OK to hit women. And then there's some, uh, you know, these old articles that say, is it all right to sometimes hit your woman? And basically four out of four men said that it was OK to do. Um, but I don't know that that really gives me a picture of life at the time because likely those same four men would say it was acceptable to hit a man when he stepped out of line too. <laughs> so, I mean, it doesn't show inequality as much as that some point in the past folks thought that beating on people was a better idea than perhaps they think it is today. Go ahead, Nathan. Give me your example that I'm ready to already eviscerate, <laughs> and I don't even disagree with you. All right. So, spoiler alert if you haven't seen the show. Um, so, there are two female characters on the show, and we mainly see them progress in their career at an advertising agency from the kind of a secretarial level to partners of the firm. Okay. Uh, the, one I'm talk the one I'm talking about is a full partner, and her she has like a half million stake in stock or whatever for this firm. So, in the uh, last season, they get bought out by a rival firm, and the, and the corporate culture of this rival firm is... Uh, not as progressive as the one that we're accustomed to. Uh, so the first, so the first man she works with uh, basically yells at her and refuses to cooperate with her at all, like he because he refuses to be bossed by a girl. And then she goes to a higher up, and the higher up uh, starts to proposition her for sex. And uh, finally, in the last episode, she goes to the head of the company and demands that he do something about it. And he basically says, "Look, I don't care about your accomplishments. You're a woman." Uh, you know, what, whatever you did at your other firm doesn't matter. And, you know, bear in mind that this, this woman controls several important accounts worth a lot of money yeah. to the firm. So he, he, it's not really – it's being made very clear in this scene that he, he does not care about the money. And, uh, and so the next you know, episode, she takes her important accounts and goes and starts her own advertising agency on Madison Avenue just down the street. Actually, the show is uh, realistic enough to not go that route. The impression that we get You don't is think that, that women in the 1950s went and started their own advertising agencies on Madison Avenue? I've got news for you, pal. I'm in the <laughs> advertising industry, and the vaginas outweigh us by a long shot. It's a, it's a w Marketing and advertising is a largely female-run industry. I, I worked at a marketing agency in New York before I came up here, and we and your always... Bosses, we, and what, what was your boss's name? What, 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 what was she called? I, uh, my boss, his name, well, my partner, his name was Eddie. But okay. we, we hired almost exclusively female salespersons because, uh, well, you know, when, when a woman calls you on the phone, there's a tendency to not be quite as upset as when a man calls you on the phone. My bosses have been female more than half the time. Right. Well, the show was set in 1960s, so okay. maybe that plays, that plays a role. I don't, I don't know. I'm sorry. I didn't, didn't know if I made that clear, but this is it a, a right, historical. So, so what, what direction did it go in? So the direction it went in is she was going in and threatening, I'm going to bring the ACLU and the EEOC Jeez. and Freddie Ferdinand's going to be in your lobby. And he basically stared her down and said, I'll give you 50 cents on the dollar for your stake in the firm to never see you again. And she talked to the male friends that she has. and They said, well, that's the best deal you're going to get. So she took it and left. OK, so and a woman who threatened to bring the ACLU into her workplace. 
<laughs> was not treated kindly by her employer? Wow, that's so shocking. That's what, yeah. a, what a sexist, terrible thing to do to somebody. Did she vote to merge with this other firm? Well, yeah, I, I, yeah. In a previous episode, they had uh, they had some kind of discussion and they merged with this firm. But sounds to me like she overall, made a bad mi- business move, and maybe this has happened to someone. But I, you know, I mean, I just. I don't know, man. I mean, I'm, I'm, I call me nonplussed. This isn't history. This is a television show. I'd much rather talk about... Uh, I'm know, not surprised to find out that, you know, in the 1960s or tomorrow morning that somebody's like, hey, I don't feel like working with dames. Get lost, broad. Like, it wouldn't surprise me to find out that this happened tomorrow. I just don't fundamentally have a problem with it. I certainly think well, that there are certain there are certain situations where women are an unwelcome distraction when, when, when men are trying to do things and if people don't want them in the workplace i don't think it's unreasonable well i mean do you find it reasonable for a superior to proposition his subordinate for sex and you know i don't find that unusual at all um i I, I mean do you find it acceptable is what i'm trying to ask you know i would say it depends on the the place i've had uh i've had women uh business office managers uh slam the come into my office slam the door on me and say take your clothes off she was kidding at least I laughed at it, but, uh, you know, I, I didn't to get all bent out of shape. Now, I can see why it would be considered threatening if a man did it, right? Like, I can get how that would be, you know, like, the, it's all about tone and intimation and who you're talking to and all that stuff. I found it to be a pretty darn humorous joke at a, in an office where people had kind of, you know, they played these games. I am so rarely upset by offers of sexual intercourse. <laughs> like, I, I, I can't really, I could... I, I can't count a single time where a woman offered me sex and I was fundamentally disturbed by it, right? Like, I might have said no a couple of times. I can see how it would be annoying for women, right? Like, when they get more offers, they get more offers than I get, right? Like, well, so. I mean, it's like I, if they got more offers for money, I don't like I don't understand this, like, complaining. Like, you see women on Facebook, like, guys, you know, I'm uh, if, if I'm interested in you, you'll know. I'm sick of all the guys hitting on me, and, and you see this. And I'm like, if that's your biggest problem, I have no sympathy for you whatsoever, People want to have sex with you. Oh, poor dear. <laughs> well, uh, you know, walking the streets of New York and getting hit on or whatever is one thing. But when you're in a professional work environment, that's not cool. It At probably least, doesn't I don't make find you feel acceptable. valued in, in some ways. But I, I never felt you asked me what I felt like when I was treated that way. And I answered your question for you. I don't I wouldn't treat a female employee that way, but. I do. I am of the realization that human beings tend to date the people they hang around with. And so, therefore, if you happen to be in an office, you're likely to end up dating somebody in the office. If that person happens to be a boss or a subordinate, who am I to say otherwise? Would you would you be as offended by this scene if it was uh, gender role reversal, where the woman is the boss and then tries to have sex with her male employee? Well, yeah. And in fact, I was actually reading a court case that you might find interesting, Cantwell, since it's about a man uh, being harassed by a woman called, uh, I think it's EEOC versus Prospect Services. And it's uh, basically, it's a, it's a scary brief. I mean, this woman is kind of stalking him and, uh, you know, constantly harassing him at work. And, uh, you know, it's not, it, you can tell from the tone that he has to seek counseling and all this. It's not fun. He doesn't uh, so. have to seek counseling. He goes seek another job. Like, I'm sick of this well, whole, yeah, like, yeah. you know, this, this comes from like a right to have a job theory that you don't like your workplace conditions and thus you're going to start a lawsuit. It's ridiculous. Like, go, go, go on Craigslist or Monster, you loser. <laughs> I'm so sick of hearing about this. I mean, even like, dude, I mean, even like teachers and students, right? I mean, like, I wanted to bang my Spanish teacher so bad when I was in high school, right? And, uh, and, uh, you know, if she had offered it to me, I'd have been like, yeah, I, I'd be bragging about it to this day. It would have been awesome. You know, I wish uh, uh, plenty of times where, where I've been uh, uh, in situations where I was subordinate to a woman throughout my career. I mean, I would I would absolutely love it if she was like, hey, follow me into the ladies room. So how would you feel if the roles were reversed and Mark Edge said something like, well, can well, you can get a promotion if you do the right things for me? Well, I would probably leave. Yucky. See, that's how we'd feel. I don't know. Okay. This this poor lady lost, uh, you know, through a bad business deal, lost about half the value of her firm because she did not check out the people with whom she merged with. And that's a shame. But, you know, she's can go start another firm. 855-450-FREE. Free Talk Live. Are you completely free of stress and fatigue? 
Well, of course not. You aren't alone, though. Now think about how nice it would be to begin relieving some of that stress and fatigue. Let me introduce you to a product that has and is working for me. It it's called surprise. Youthful Greens. Youthful Greens. It's packed full of nature's nourishing, cleansing, and alkalizing greens, providing a powerful dose of whole food nutrition in each serving. Youthful Greens helps increase overall energy levels and reduce all that fatigue and stress on your body. And right now, when you visit freegreens.net or call 800-333-6923 and order your one-month supply of Youthful Greens for only $20, Twenty nine ninety five. you get another month's supply for free. That's two months of Youthful Greens for the already low price of just twenty nine ninety five, plus free shipping. That's saving you $45. Visit freegreens.net today or simply call 800-333-6923. And hey, you're welcome. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leaving them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Youngevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Youngevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Youngevity. It's all about saving money, I don't getting go, healthy, I don't and creating it wealth. Even necessarily every day, but I do check. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Tollhouse Morsels, helping you create special moments and memories your family will cherish forever. Visit us at tollhouse.com. You may bake for birthdays and holidays, but why stop there? Sweeten up the rest of the year by designating monthly dessert days. Treat your family to one of their favorites or surprise them with something new. Either way, you'll create a tradition everyone will love. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. It's 855-450-3733. You can call in and talk about whatever is on your mind. This live edition of Free Talk Live, it's Mark with you. Johnny Fuhrer Teutonicus Ray. <laughs> and Cantwell. That sounded so, like, non-spectacular after it, your little spiel there. Whatever that Anarchist, was. Anarchist, atheist, apologies. abolitionist. 855-450-FREE. <laughs> If you're looking to get Bitcoins, the place to go is ExpressCoin.com. There you can get several different types of cryptocurrency. They've got Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dashcoin, Dogecoin. They make it fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive. 
They're a licensed money services business. You can get your cryptocurrencies with a money order or a check. Just start off at expresscoin.com. Whether you're in the U.S. or Canada, and matter of fact, they've got an app for your phone, expresscoin.com. Use coupon code FTL when you purchase up to $40 worth of whatever cryptocurrency it is you choose with no fee at all. You'll get no fee if you use coupon code FTL and purchase less than $40 worth at expresscoin.com. Again, it's coupon code FTL. I think we've kind of tapped out on this uh, this topic. Oh, um, no, no, actually, we, we didn't. Can't, well, you had another thing uh, here, yeah. another article. So I'm sorry. Let's, let's see what happens when we take feminist ideology to its ultimate logical conclusion. <laughs> what is its ultimate logical conclusion? PIV is always rape, okay? PIV, penis and vagina, sexual intercourse. Uh, and I've got this article over at uh, Witchwind uh, where she's saying that all male, female sexual intercourse is rape. She says uh, this has to be some kind of satire, doesn't it? This is not her only. This is there are many posts on this blog. She's she writes pretty regularly. Okay. Um, if if this is a spoof, it's a very hard won spoof. Yeah, she's uh, she's she's gone the long way. But I mean, it. if you think about it, if you start looking at like go go look at Lacey Green's YouTube channel, guys, and and look at what some of the stuff that this woman is saying. I mean, basically, that's the conclusion here. They they don't want to come out and say it flat out that all sex is rape, but this is what they rape rape is the default position, right? So if if you have sex and it's perfectly consensual, and the woman wakes up and decides that she regrets it, she should be able to report you for rape, and and we should believe her by default. I mean, that's that's really the position. That's like a mainstream feminist position that was in the Washington Post not so long ago, where like uh, the the situation with this woman Jackie at uh, uh, UVA, uh, where it turns out that it was a completely false, completely made up rape allegation that was run in Rolling Stone. And this this woman, I think it was the Washington Post. I don't have the article in front of me, but she says it doesn't matter what Jackie said. We should believe rape accusations as a matter of default. And that's it's a ridiculous thing to say that. I mean, rape by default is the is the position. Right. Well, so if you if you do not use the same standard for rape that you have for other crimes, then you will find that uh, people are therefore incentivized to claim rape. Um, not just women, but it'll be men too. At some point, that you know, just like every but every time somebody says I've been raped, you should just believe that without probable cause, without uh, re- you know proving it beyond a reasonable doubt. I mean, cases don't even get to court anymore. Court is this antiquated idea. Far fewer than one percent of cases reach court. So this is all about when you get charged any longer. Right. So you're going to be faced with you know 25 years in prison for a rape, and then you're going to get offered uh, you know increasingly lower um, sentences if you plead guilty up to the point that you While go you before sit that in county jury. Jail and your job goes away, your apartment goes away, your dog dies, your cat runs off, um, and all the other things that happen to you while you're in jail. So the article goes on, just to recall a basic fact, intercourse slash PIV is always rape, plain and simple. There is a developed recap from what I've been saying in various comments here and there in the last two years so far. As a radfem, I've always said PIV is rape, and I remember being disappointed to discover that so few radical feminists stated it clearly. How can you possibly see it otherwise? Intercourse is the very means through which men oppress us, from which we are not allowed to escape. Yet some instances of PIV and intercourse may be chosen and free? That makes no sense at all. Well, first, what? well, well first intercourse- off, she hasn't made the case that, uh, that in any way I've oppre- ever oppressed a woman through sex. I mean, I told you that this is a cesspool. Of, it, this, is, this is a depraved indifference for reality itself. They are detached from the ontological structure of the universe. These people are dangerous, and they vote. Well, they, there's not that many of them. Their vote isn't that dangerous. It's their, it's their writings and their, uh, the, the, the clatter that they create on the Internet. You should see, I, I went on uh, Radical Agenda, and I was playing clips from Hillary Clinton had this presentation at this, this feminist outlet, Women of the World Summit or something to this effect. And she's talking about lots of fanatic, lunatic things. I mean, she's a candidate for the presidency of the United States, and she's still talking about the pay gap. Like, we haven't figured this out yet. So... <clears throat> So, okay. Well, first, well, intercourse is never sex for women. Only men experience rape as sexual and define it as such. Sex for men is the unilateral penetration of their penis into a woman or anything else replacing and symbolizing the female orifice. Whether she thinks she wants it or not, which is the definition of rape, that he will do it anyway and that he uses her and treats her as a receptacle in all circumstances. It makes no difference to him experiencing it as sexual. That is, at the very least, men use women as usual 
useful objects and instruments for penetration, and women are dehumanized by this act. It she is an like, act of violence. She sounds like somebody who had a terrible like thing occur to them and has just like so internalized this and then she's attempting to externalize it um, is what it sounds like. I, I mean, I'm no psychiatrist, but it sounds for all the world like something bad happened to this lady and now no woman can ever be happy with a man. Well, I mean, something is, there's some psychological damage going on here, no question about it, whether it was because she got, you know, raped in college or what, who knows, but she's damaged. She's a a, a lunatic. She's a complete fanatic. As FCM pointed out some time ago, intercourse is inherently harmful to women, and intentionally so. Inherently harmful? I mean, sex is good for people. It makes them live longer. Because it causes pregnancy in women. I so see. now she's anti-breeding. The very purpose of men enforcing intercourse well, regularly. Sex, sex. Uh, you know, like, life is a sexually transmitted disease, right? <laughs> like, a parasite grows in a woman for nine months. Um, childbirth, at least least from a natural standpoint, not particularly healthy for women. Oftentimes they would die from it. So I, I think that there's a, to some extent, an argument for what they're saying, but you're still taking away people's choice. You're not taking away people's choice. Oh, you're taking away people's choice if you tell them that penis and vagina sex is oh, rape. okay, okay. Yeah. Um, so the purpose of men enforcing intercourse regularly, as in more than once a month, onto women what? is because it's the surest way to cause pregnancy and force childbearing against our will and thereby gain control over our reproductive powers. There, no, no. Oh, hold on. I don't know of any man who enforces sex on his woman more than once a month. What this, you know, the fact is, is that you're not going to marry or, and or stay with somebody with whom you are not sexually compatible. That means it's not women who are... Uh, enforcing sex uh you know sexual norms it's excuse me it's not men who are enforcing sexual norms it's women they are the gatekeepers of it there's somebody out there that is willing to offer sex three times a week and uh, you know the man wants it three times a week he's likely at some point or another to leave the gal who only wants it once a month and refuses to give it up and uh, pretend and, and go along like she enjoys it i mean this is just how it goes and it could go the other way too it's not like relationships aren't lopsided sexually um in favor of women too i mean this is it's just this is about separating people based on gender, and I think it's a terrible idea. It's crazy and dangerous, and this is this is where it ultimately goes. I mean, they're saying that men are oppressive by the very nature of our relationship with women, and this is where it ends up. It's nutty. I, I, I don't even know what to think about it. 855-450-3733. What do you think? 855-450-FREE. Make an argument for penis and vagina sex being rape. Free Talk Live. We all know that Berkey Water Purification Systems are the most trusted name in water filtration. As an authorized Berkey dealer for over six years and serving thousands of satisfied customers, the Berkey Guy offers amazing specials for Berkey Water Filtration Systems. The Berkey Light Systems include a set of self-sterilizing and recleanable black purification elements that purify water by removing chlorine, pathogenic bacteria, cysts and parasites to non-detectable levels and remove harmful chemicals such as herbicides and pesticides. Order the Berkey Light System System today complete with two black Berkey elements for only $231 and the Berkey guy will ship your order free of charge. With the purchase of a Berkey light, the Berkey guy is also offering a set of fluoride and arsenic filters for only $39.99. That's over 30% off the retail price. Call the Berkey guy at 1-877-886-3653. That's 1-877-886-3653 or order online at goberkey.com. That's goberkey.com today. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year's keynote speeches and panels will be announced via the Keenvention blog and Facebook, so stay tuned there for the latest. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 30th through November 1st. 
Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $50 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $50 price only lasts through the end of June, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at keenvention.info. Visit keenvention.info for more and look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Cato University is the Cato Institute's premier educational event of the year. It's being held this year from July the 26th to the 31st at the Cato Institute's state-of-the-art headquarters in Washington, D.C. This annual program brings together outstanding faculty and participants from across the country and often from around the globe, with everyone sharing a commitment to liberty and learning. Cato University is a genuine community, and you can freely share viewpoints, concerns, ideas, questions, and more in an atmosphere of friendship and personal respect. It's a -a one-of-a-kind program for people who don't stop thinking after they got out of school. It's for people who don't want politicians or bureaucrats or officials to do their thinking for them. It's for people who value liberty. You'll learn. You'll be inspired. You'll make new friends. You'll meet great people from around the world. All of the details are spelled out at the Cato website, cato.org, and they hope to see you there this summer, July the 26th through the 31st in Washington, D.C. Again, details are at cato.org. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. You can call in and talk about whatever is on your mind this evening. It's Mark with you. Johnny Ray. And Cantwell. 855-450-FREE. I am going to Freedom Fest. It's going to be a great event. It's at uh, Planet Hollywood, July the 8th through the 11th. So just re- just think 7 to 11 in Vegas. It's Freedom Fest. You can go to freedomfest.com to get tickets. And this is going to be a fantastic event. It's Discover the New American Dream is their theme. And this is the largest, by far, liberty-oriented conference in existence. Um, Please, come out and hang out with me. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Planet Hollywood in Las Vegas. So, you know, it doesn't have to be all uh, seminars and that sort of thing. There's going to be a debate between Paul Krugman and uh, this this Moore fella. He's the uh, number one supply cider, um, and I think that this is that in and of itself is it's Steve Moore. I'm sorry, he's uh, the number one Wall Street Journal columnist and chief economist for the Heritage Foundation. He's taking on Paul Krugman, the Nobel Prize eco- winning economist and the number one New York Times columnist to debate. Austerity versus stimulus, red state versus blue state, flat tax versus progressive tax, and this is only at Freedom Fest. This is this is the prize fight of sort of uh, Austrian economists, anybody who's interested in sort of economic theory and that sort of thing. I haven't ever heard of something like this happening. What was the name of the economist who's debating Krugman again? Uh, his name is Steve Moore. Um, I mean, I wish it was uh, Robert Murphy, but I think it's going to be epic anyway, um, and I'm very excited. Sounds like Chicago school versus Keynesianism to me. 
Uh, probably more so. I shouldn't have said Austrian, but uh, yeah, I was going to say if if the, I, I would have recognized an Austrian economist, I didn't recognize that name, but it's still good to to uh, to see the debate going down. I mean, anybody who can uh, talk a semi-rational economic policy and have that debate with Paul Krugman, I think, will be an interesting thing to see. That sounds like a blast. Steve Forbes will be there. He's he's almost always there. He's a great um, great guy to talk to. John Mackey, the CEO of Whole Foods, uh, Peter Thiel, Steve Wynn, um, Harris Rosen, other. Other successful business leaders. It's going to be a great event. Cato, Heritage, Reason, Students for Liberty, Ayn Rand Institute, Freedom Works, Americans for Prosperity. This is it. This is the premier event, uh, and it's going to be a lot of fun out in Vegas. Please come out, hang out with me. And uh, when you're filling out your form for freedomfest.com, be sure to mention that you heard it on the radio because that's how they're rating Free Talk Live on this. They're like, I'm not sure. We haven't advertised like this before. They're, they're un, unsure. And I'm certain that of my many listeners out there, lots of them want to go to Freedom Fest. And if you do, please let them know that you heard about it on Free Talk Live and you're excited to go. Um, when you register, make sure you say that you heard it on the radio. If you've already got your tickets, maybe you can send them an email and say something about uh, you heard it and you're excited to, that Free Talk Live's going. They It's freedomfest.com to register. They've got a telephone number, and it's funny. It's very similar to our number. Check it out. Their number is 855-850-FREE. <laughs> <laughs> so you can call them at 855-850-FREE to register. Or you can call in to talk on Free Talk Live at 855-450-FREE. So, yeah, Johnny Ray, it's funny. Was, uh, yeah, it's great. I was going to make a joke about you confusing me now. But, Mark, <laughs> on uh, past visits to Freedom Fest, have you ever met a guy named McQuistion? I don't think so, no. Okay. He has, I think he's a Texas uh, public TV personality, and it just so happens last night as I was uh, at one of my work sites mopping the floor, I was listening to a, a, an interview with him and Tom Woods, and it w had taken place at Freedom Fest a year or two ago. Freedomfest.com. Let's go to James calling in from Michigan. James, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Uh, yes, um, I'm going to uh, change the subject uh, right here. Uh, I'd like to talk about um, something that happened uh, here in Michigan today. I'm pretty sure you guys probably don't know much about it, um, but it's uh, it's called Proposition 1. Now, this is something that's uh, been being shoved down Michiganders' throats for some time now. Um, with it's become political, our roads, because they're crumbling, um, some of the worst in the country, supposedly. Man. But but, but who it can't be them. worse than New England's. <laughs> well, and then they've been, you know, it's, it's it's been politicized. People have been running campaigns on this, and it all kind of came to a head today when there was a vote on what was called Proposition One, which would have been one of the biggest tax increases uh, in Michigan since I think 1987. Um, essentially, it would have increased the sales tax to seven percent. Um, restructured the gas tax and made it more expensive to register vehicles, as well as putting um, a much bigger load on larger vehicles. Well, this is always people, silly because so I, being from Florida, I see all these uh, license plates from, you know, the Midwest, Michigan, and that sort of thing. When you're down there, it just means the people that uh, spend some time of the year down in Florida are going to register their vehicles down in Florida, and they're going to Michigan's going to lose out on that much revenue. Yeah, absolutely. Well. Um, the, the residents of the socialist state of Michigan, based on what uh, has come in, have overwhelmingly told them that they don't want an increase in taxes. Okay. I'm talking uh, a range of like 13 percent to 87 percent. That's pretty, pretty, pretty uh, clear. Yeah, I got the story in uh, WXYZ here. It said uh, early polls said voters would vote down the proposal by a nearly two to one margin. But early returns say the proposal is losing by a nearly four to one margin. <laughs> right. Is it going to lose by yeah. a colossal amount or a <laughs> devastating amount? <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's absolutely clear that the people of Michigan are tired of high taxes. You know, we've got to uh, already have a pretty high sales tax and income tax. I mean, we're, we're being taxed to death here in Michigan. Um, and so it's it's nice to see that the, the people aren't buying the, you know, crap that the uh, state's feeding us. Let yep, me let know. me ask you: is um, there uh, is there is there an alternative proposal to solve this roads thing by by cutting some spending somewhere else? 
Well, our, uh, first off, it was our, gov- our, our Republican governor that was trying to shove this down our throat. Not um, surprising. So that, <laughs> um, no, he just said, uh, essentially, if it doesn't pass, he's going to have to look at other options. And I say, uh, how about cut spending? Oh, God, Republicans love taxes. Republicans love taxes. I've, I've been hearing some recent uh, stuff from the War Ad Council about uh, how the Republicans are—, are cheerleading for common core now i've got him a uh, here's an idea here's a great idea he can how he can do it the fact is that colorado has seen a huge boon i think it's about more than 200 million dollars in revenue to the state uh, you know dollars positive dollars towards to the state by legalizing marijuana just go ahead and legalize marijuana in the state of uh, michigan let out everybody who's uh, in Michigan prisons for marijuana, um, you know, possession of marijuana or trafficking marijuana or whatever, any marijuana charge. Let them out. And then you can have all that savings from, A, the convicts that you're not having to incarcerate anymore, and B, whatever revenue you can get from tax and the weed. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and... I'm going to go ahead and say uh, I disagree with the uh, the state. Uh, Thanks for the call, James. Getting all of this benefit from legalizing marijuana. If you want to repeal your marijuana laws, go have at it. But I think the Colorado and Washington model is a terrible thing. And I don't want the state to have more money. By all means, let your prisoners out. And, you know, you can stop spending like $40,000 a year per prisoner or whatever lunatic sum you're spending on that. Uh, you could probably fix a few roads for that. I don't want the state to have control of roads either, but uh, today they seem to have that. Mark, Let's... if you if you dismantle the the prison industrial complex, you're going to lose the economic boon that is afforded by kickbacks and corruption. Yeah, and we can't have that. <laughs> what what will the people that are in the, the, the hinterland do for jobs if it's not prison guard? Well, they'll figure something out. Tammy, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Uh, yes, this is Tammy from Indiana. Good to be with you, Tammy. What's up? Well. I just want to tell you a little short story. 11 years ago, about 7 a.m., my front door was being kicked on like all hell was breaking loose. Oh, excuse my language. Now you can say hell. Anyways, okay. And it was seven state police officers at my door, guns ready to blaze. Tam- Tammy, oh, hold, hold this. Um, I'm very interested in what happened with uh, all these uh, state police officers kicking her door in. You want to hear it? It's probably for the children. You better hang on. It, it probably is. You've got to keep somebody safe. 855-450-3733. Free Talk Live. Kid, this facility is like a ship. So how do I keep us on course without micromanaging every detail? Easy. With Granger. Granger's online tools help give me the visibility I need. I can shop, order, and manage all our activity. Oversee purchases, control costs, all while you guys get to order what you need when you need it. I run a tight ship, kid. I run it with Granger. Get it? Got it? Good. Learn more at Granger.com slash online purchasing. Granger, for the ones who get it done. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non thinking the dead swarm his home now he must apply his porcupine freedom scouts training to improvise his escape look for survivor max on facebook read reviews on amazon or read chapter one at survivormax.com it's time to build your own emergency food stockpile with the industry leader my patriot supply once you try them you'll know why so many americans like you have made them part of their emergency preparedness plan experience the my patriot supply difference today with this unbelievable offer right now a four-week food supply is only 99 dollars, and that includes free shipping that's 50 percent off the online price call 800-274-3070 to claim yours limit two per caller while supplies last this offer isn't available online so you want to make sure and grab this opportunity to get prepared today 800-274-3070 to get your four-week food supply for the incredible price of only 99 dollars, and it'll be shipped to you completely free call 800-274-3070 right now that's 800-274-3070 to claim yours while supplies last don't wait call today 
There are two types of advertising. Poll advertising, like Google AdWords, where a consumer goes looking for widgets near them and you try to pull them in with your ad away from the other widget purveyors. Then there's push advertising, where you push your message out about your great widgets and attempt to convince people who weren't thinking about widgets at all that what they need in their life right now is your widget. Radio is push advertising. In the course of a week, there are probably over a quarter million good folks listening to Free Talk Live, and they could hear your message. We are having a sale right now, and it ends May 15th. 200 30-second ads for $1,997. That's like 10 bucks an ad. Find another show with that kind of rate with 150-plus stations. Email me, Mark Edge at mark at freetalklive.com, and I'll set you up. You don't need to have an ad. We'll produce it for you. Buy 200 30-second ads by May 15th and get them for less than $10 a piece. It's a big savings, and you don't want to miss it. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Now, the three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. LRN.FM needs your help getting our satellite signal back on in Africa. Our satellite provider had us on at no charge from 2012 through February of this year when they pulled the channel off the air. Now we're trying to raise $22,000 to continue reaching people with the message of liberty in places where it's needed most. Please visit our Indiegogo fundraiser at Africa. Dot LRN dot FM. Give what you can and share the link with your friends. Africa dot LRN dot FM. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip in on the right side of the page at LRN dot FM. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. It's 855-450-FREE. There are not many shows out there like Free Talk Live where we open up the mics and let you get on and talk about whatever it is that you want to talk about. And for good reason. <laughs> There's <laughs> certainly not very many shows out there that take the pro-liberty stand that we do on the issues where we are bringing the ideas of liberty to Mr. and Mrs. America listening to talk radio across the nation, 150 stations. Does uh, Miss America listen to this program? I wasn't... Uh, Mr. certainly does. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> Talk radio tends to be largely male-driven. I'm not entirely sure why. Somebody probably has a theory. Nonetheless, if you want to support us in our mission of bringing these ideas of uh, liberty, at least to Mr. America, you can do so by going to amp.freetalklive.com. It's amp.freetalklive.com. The fact is, is we use every single dollar that comes to the AMP program to advertise, market, and promote Free Talk Live. None of it goes to paychecks for us. That's not what's happening here. It's, it's certainly not going to me. <laughs> it's certainly not going to Cantwell. So if that's what you'd like to see, if you'd like to see us on more station, literally your dollars correlate to uh, you know, ad campaigns and Free Talk Live. More dollars more ad campaigns. Often, uh, I think we're working on some Google AdWords right now to get more podcast listeners. These, these, th this works. 855 free Let's go to, I'm sorry, it's amp.freetalklive.com. Let's go back to Tammy talking about how the, the police knocked on her door nicely in the morning uh, about 11 years ago. Go ahead, Tammy. Yes. This is Tammy from Indiana. Yes. Yeah, Tell yeah. us about the uh, police beating on the door. Uh, about 11 years ago for a minor marijuana charge. About 7 a.m., I get a knock on my door, or should I say, sounds like my whole apartment coming apart, and there's seven to eight state police coming saying they want my husband. Well, I'm sitting there, I'm like, you guys can put your guns away. You know, one goes around me, and I hear this large thud upstairs. I go up there, find my husband, not resisting, in handcuffs, with the officer, if you can call him that, Nazi, with his boot on my husband's back and macing him in the back of the head. Yeah, yeah Nazis had officers, too. You can call them that. <laughs> okay, good. Um, uh, so you didn't actually get to see whether your husband, uh, you know, like I would think I would resist at 7 a.m. if somebody came to, uh, you know, put some we handcuffs were, on me, like I might be a little groggy or whatever. 
that was the case, you know. He was getting up because he heard everything downstairs, you know. We sure. all were just getting our morning started. And I hear a thud like you wouldn't believe. I run upstairs, and he's literally already cuffed, not even have pants on, underwear. And the officer is macing him in the back of the head. Yeah, that had to make the bedroom smell, smell nice. Oh, yeah. You know, I guess my point is... I'd always considered myself a libertarian, but until it's actually in your face and you're seeing them totally in action, it really puts things in perspective. Yeah, it definitely does. I mean, I uh, I don't know. I, I was sort of like a Fox News zombie for a good long portion of my life, and it wasn't until I got a really bad deal with the legal system that I turned around and I said, you know what? I think these people are all evil. Exactly. I honestly can say, and I used to, you know, teeter back and forth, there is not one good officer, pig, out there. They have the mentality of Hitler. It is it is the nature of their job, right? I mean, the whole point of their uh, existence in this world is to threaten people with violence to gain their compliance. If you disobey their political masters, they will hurt you. Why exactly. would any decent person want to do that? Well, I, I, and the sad part is, here in Indiana, I really don't feel comfortable saying what county we live in. It's probably best. But um, Madison County, they have reelected this prosecutor, Rodney Cummings, over and over, and he is hell on earth. Yeah, if they have Cummings over and over again. That just sounds like a bad problem. Uh, so this, the fact is, if you're a police officer and you've got to go into someone's house and uh, you know arrest them on a relatively regular basis, and this is what the the drug war has brought us. I mean, in the case of your exactly. husband, this is a, a minor marijuana charge, and they've got to. But what you have to do is you have to project authority the entire time because going into Someone else's house is a dangerous thing. You know, animals, even smaller animals can usually defeat larger animals if they're in their own territory. And that's right. what they have to sort of uh, deal with. I'm not saying this is like that in and of itself is just sort of psychology. The problem is, is that we're sending police officers on a re regular basis 50,000 drug raids per year in this country, and that doesn't count a warrant like what you're talking about. You're talking SWAT exactly. raids specifically. These are SWAT raids. So this happens hundreds of thousands of times a year, and the reason for it is because of the drug war. If you got yep. rid of the drug war, you wouldn't see these situations going on nearly as often, and if somebody, you know, for instance, this was a armed robber who was thrown to his uh, belly and uh, maced in the back of the head, you know, we'd be going boo-hoo, big right. deal, right? Right. That's the problem. Exactly. Yeah. Tammy, you thanks know, for the call. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys for having us on, and we don't ever miss your show. Thank you. Bye-bye. 855-450 free. Let's go to Lee in Kentucky. Lee, you're on Free Talk Live. We don't ever miss your show. There you go. Get to turn off the radio, Lee. Hey, this is Lee. Yes. Yeah, Lee. What's on your mind? Hey, hey guys. Uh, I just wanted to talk to y'all about the national debt. Um, uh what do Wonderful you thing, that, ain't it? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. No, uh, I'm I'm just trying to uh, see see what you uh, you gents uh, what y'all's opinion on uh, the national debt and how how uh, we could possibly get it to to become lower than what it is now. Well, um, I, know, I my suspicion would be that the national debt will never become lower. What I what I sort of suspect it, is it uh, got lower under Clinton. Like one year, there was a uh, there was a, what they call a budget surplus, which means that the deficit uh, th there was no deficit, meaning that some amount of the national debt was paid. It wasn't much comparatively, but it was the only time in my lifetime, so it's worth talking about. You know, there are people who say that, uh, and I don't know how accurate this is, but 100% of the income tax goes to paying the interest on that debt. Yeah, I think that's pretty accurate, um, that uh, just just income tax itself really is just paying the interest on debt. But what do you think the advantage, Lee, is of paying down the debt? Um, our credit score uh, possibly go come back up. Uh, I know it was lowered a few years ago. The reason it was lowered um, was likely because um, of political infighting in Washington, D.C., that uh, 
you know, the Republicans didn't want to raise the debt ceiling so that the Federal Reserve could essentially lend more money to the United States Treasury. So it might one might claim that it wasn't the debt, but the fighting over the debt that actually did it. Like I, I, I'm disturbed by the debt too, but I wonder to myself if it matters at all because the debt represents money in circulation. A Federal Reserve note is a a note is like a note you have on your house. It is a representation of debt. The United States government borrows money from the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve issues debt to the Treasury. That's how we get a um a, a bill. So, for instance, the 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 mint can make money. The Federal Reserve makes debt. Something else. It's kind of interesting. A Sacagawea coin, one dollar coin, is actually money made by the United States government. The Federal Reserve makes a Federal Reserve note. So these things kind of cancel each other out. They make zero. Oh, I never thought about that. Um, <laughs> this is my first time on a talk radio show, so I, there's like a hundred questions I have. But, well, I mean, to the um, to the question of how to talk. how to uh, how to lower it. I mean, the the answer to the question is to dramatically cut spending, right, and to uh, and to take in the same amount of revenue, and then to pay your debts, right. But, but they're not going. Ne- that'll, never happen. that'll never happen. There's no political but, will. I don't think they can. No, they can't. how could you get elected by by promising to uh, not give people all the goodies that they there want? would essentially be no money left, but there would be no I mean, because most of the money in existence are Federal Reserve notes. They represent the U.S. debt. And if you paid off the debt, there the, would be no money. The Federal Reserve notes represent debt, not necessarily just the government's debt. Right. There's a lot more dollars out there than the government actually owes. No way. Yeah. There's uh, the, then the government does. There's not more. There's not more dollars than debt in the system. That's an inherently impossible thing with the way it the depends on whether you're talking works. about M zero, M one, M two, and the now defunct M three. There's different types of money. So there's M zero is essentially do- dollar bills in circulation. M one is oh god, and I'm stuck flat footed, not remembering what this is exactly. But there's these different types of money that are in existence, and uh, it. You know, this stuff is dizzying, and it's intended to be dizzying, so the average person can't understand it. It's like three-card Monty. H.L. The- Mankin said that it's well enough that the average American doesn't understand the monetary and banking system, because if he did, there'd be a revolution tomorrow. Yeah, that's exactly right. Lee, thanks for the call. Appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Thanks. 850. What? I'm giving out the number. I meant to say freetalklive.com. <laughs> Drive safely. Check us out in the meantime. We've got our Facebook page at facebook.freetalklive.com. It's been Mark with you. Johnny Ray. Can't well. Free Talk Live. We turn to Washington, D.C., where America's roommates are holding a rally as part of their new One Vote Doesn't Matter political action campaign. The rally, which drew thousands of roommates, ranging from the guy who keeps all of his groceries in his room to the guy whose name the lease is under, is just a part of a surging grassroots movement to spread the message that one person's vote can't make a difference if you really, really think about it. You know, this is like the most important election of our lifetime. We just want to get the word out that it's already been f-ing decided in some smoke-filled boardroom. You know, I pretty much minored in poli-sci, so I think I get this stuff. Joining us now is Jason Copeland at a rally in the nation's capital. Jason, how would you describe the energy there? Yeah, hi, Andrea. I'd say it's a definite uh, chill vibe. Uh, I just saw the roommate whose only friend seems to be his younger brother and the guy who just has an air mattress in his room passing out flyers together. Now, the roommates do make some interesting points. The electoral college is, it is weird. This is the Onion News Network. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate. Oof, I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.